beloved one i hope you are doing well i want us to take a short reading from the book of psalms chapter 127 it says if god's grace doesn't help the builders they will labor in vain to build a house if god's mercy doesn't protect the city all the centuries will circle it in vain it's really a senseless to work so hard from morning till late at night toiling to make a living for fear of not having enough now god can provide i want you to see that it says god can provide for his devoted lovers even while they sleep now this tells us of the great things that we enjoy anytime we come into god's presence if this is the direction aaron is headed all right if he's following this direction i hope you know that he's taking this step based on a mindset is that true based on an ideology based on a conviction whether academic whether cultural whether religious it doesn't matter now what the word of god does is that when you collide with god through his word there must be a force from the word greater than the force that was initially driving you and that force changes your state this is what we call repentance to repent is not just to confess your sin to repent is to lay down the ideology that take you into that realm and bring you into a new philosophy so that we can look at you and see that your thinking pattern has changed let me tell you if your thought life does not change if your mindset does not change you can limit god in your life hallelujah the bible says they limited god in the wilderness as mighty as god is a man's mentality can limit god for a long time god wanted to bless abraham but the mindset of the traditional worship the mindset of the culture he was coming from limited god god kept beckoning on him i want to make you a father of nations i want to make you great but abraham's mind could not cooperate with that which the spirit wanted to do and one day the lord said abraham come out of your house I, I i need to do something to your mind to align with my purposes for your life abraham come out he said now look at the stars let me give you something to play around with and when he tried counting the stars he said can you count them he said no he said so shall thy seed be finally abraham believed god and it was counted unto him for righteousness hallelujah the power of God is not short to change and bring miracles and breakthroughs. It's just that we have been taught. And, and, and it's my job in the body of Christ to always address imbalances and error. On one side, we've been taught that everything depends on God. You have no role to play. You just be born again and there is a smooth ride. Common sense teaches you that it does not make sense. Are you following me now? Then on the other hand, we have men who are struggling, just using concepts alone and human philosophy, forgetting that there must be a God factor in the equation of your life. Both extremes are very, very wrong. All through scripture, from Genesis to Revelation, there has always been a partnership between God through his spirit and a willing vessel that can pay the price and allow his mindset to subscribe to the higher values of heaven. Hallelujah. The difference between brother A and brother B is not the color of their skin. It's their degree of alignment to the Holy Spirit. How much they have submitted their mindset to take up the higher mindset of the values. Listen, the Bible says my thoughts are higher than your thoughts. Is that true? And, and that word, the, the, the Greek word, word there, word of God, is logos. It means the thoughts of God. So the word of God gives you his ideology. When you read my books, you study my persuasions, you study my convictions. Is that true? So if you stay long enough with my books and you open up yourself to the influence of my thought patterns, you will begin to think like me, even if you've never met me. 
We will talk as though we've been together. This is the ministry of the word. It's not just to make us speak Christian language. No, the word of God is supposed to transcend. It produces a force. That force compels your mind to change, to align to spiritual things. So that when God wants to pass through your life, your ideologies will not resist him. Hallelujah. Bless you, Aaron. Everybody say transformation. Are you being transformed? It's not enough to come to church and sit down and keep writing. It's the word of God changing you. You can limit the power of the word of God. Some of you can choose to walk out of this place. Wow, nice sermon. So this is how koinonia is like. Wonderful. I'm impressed. I'm blessed. That can be your... The, the, the things that you are carrying back home. And someone else can sit down and say, Lord, I'm aware that my mindset is the reason why I am where I am. My mindset has been limiting your work in my life. You want to bless me, but there's something in my life that resists you. You want to lift me. You want to make me great. But there's something and I am aware. So I come to man. He needs to step into your soul realm and take complete charge of your mind, your mindset, so that your ideologies are a derivative of the word of God, not culture. There are aspects of culture that are good. There are aspects of culture that are devilish. Devilish. They were crafted out by wicked men, sponsored by spirits that are not under the influence of the spirit of God. And many of us have grown up with these ideologies. And although you've gone to school, although you are working, although you are married, that mindset is stopping God from doing certain things in your life. Many of us have gotten mindsets by, from our past. You have a mindset concerning fatherhood. You have a mindset concerning marriage. You have a mindset concerning money, concerning prosperity, concerning poverty, concerning God. Concerning the Holy Spirit. These are all mindsets that have been given unto us by a system that does not honor God. So when we come into his presence, we do not come just to say, Lord, add to what I have. Sometimes you need to say, Lord, open me up like a surgery, right? And pick out everything that does not align with your divine pattern. Everybody say transformation. Listen, if the word of God is truly changing you, then regardless of the fact that Aaron is from Kaduna State and Ken is from the East, you should have similarities in mindset because you have, you have laid down your personal culture to pick up the excellence of the culture of a higher kingdom. Hallelujah. But the issue is that many of us love seeing the power of God. We love seeing the grace of God. We love seeing people fall under the anointing and miracles happen. And there's nothing wrong with that except for the fact that it's the word of God changing you. The, the decisions you made last year, if you still make those decisions today, in spite of the power of God's word, then that's what they call frustrating the grace of God. Hallelujah. The Bible says the days of our ignorance, God overlooks. Right? So if you do not know, God can create a system by his mercy to help you. But where the word of the Lord comes, it comes to build you. It comes to take you out of your current position. Hallelujah. Say, I allow the word of God to change me. Say it, I allow the word of God to change me. The worst evil you can do to yourself is to hold on to your mindset. Hold on to what you had that made you such a failure. It was the failure that brought you to the presence of God. And now God is saying, lay down this thing. Pick up another culture that can take you. Your ministry is grounded because of a mindset that is keeping you. Lay down that mindset and pick
pick up another. Your marriage is not working because there is a mindset that is keeping you. Your relationship is not working because there is a mindset. Men run away from you because there is a mindset. Women run away because there is a mindset. The power of God is far. Favor is far from your life because there is an ideology that stands as an antichrist. But when you come to God's presence, he tells you, lay down this mindset. Lay down this mindset. That's your own responsibility. To say, Lord, all my life I've been taught that you must be a hustler to make it. Hit it left, right, and center. I saw my father hustling. I saw my mother hustling. I saw my elder ones hustling. And God says, uh-uh, the kingdom of God is not haphazard. Come and let me teach you how the economic system of the kingdom works. And you're like, Lord, is there even a system? And he says, yes, there is. You can walk circumspectly. Hallelujah. All your life, you've always known that if a lady wants to marry, she'll go to a herbalist with the picture of the person he wants to marry. And one goat. That's all. You've seen people around you dragging goats to herbalists to chain a brother and force him to get married. That's how you know it to be done. Now you are ready to get married. And they say, oh yeah, where is your own goat? And God is saying, uh-uh, uh-uh. He says, seek out of the book and read. None shall want her mate. So a new ideology starts coming. And I'm telling you, if you are changing, it will create blessings and create persecutions at the same time. Because you live in an environment with people who have refused to change. So your change begins to frustrate them. If they are not fighting you, you are not changing. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Something must change about your life. Everyone is used to bribing. If you want job, give this person through the back door 50,000 and they tell you look we're all Christians in fact I'm a pastor as you see me like this we all did it and the moment you want to do that a scripture rises up in you something changes is there anything too hard for me to do I am that I am and a scripture wells up in you what fellowship has righteousness got to do with lawlessness? And what communion has light got to do with darkness? And you turn and tell them, I'm going to cry, but my God will give me this job. I will not bribe anybody, no bribery. And they say, look at how stupid you are talking. Nigeria, this thing has been there. He said, uh-uh, I may be a Nigerian, but I function from another realm. There is a kingdom that sponsors my life. And I'm an ambassador. And I can call on the embassy I represent. It may take a while. I may look stupid. But God is able to make it happen. The moment you speak, you mount pressure on God because he's the one you are representing. And for the sake of his reputation, you cause him to step down. But many of us are ashamed at such points. You say, I went to school. How can I start talking about embassy, heaven? I, please, let's, let's be reasonable. What is 50,000? Hallelujah. Before now, your ideology has been the quickest way to be rich is pin down one rich man. Just find a rich, even if he's not born again, you will change him. Pin him down, force him to marry you. That's how they've been taught. And there are many people here as you're sitting down. Some is your parents. They've indirectly warned you. They say, have we not suffered in this life? They say, yes, we have suffered. Say, do you want us to continue like this? They say, no, sir. Say, talk. Complete the puzzle by yourself. What they are telling you indirectly is that no matter how born again this brother is, once he has not arrived, the promises are not there. 
pack your load and go. And some of you, that's how you are looking. And God is sending a very godly brother. You are seeing him pray here. He's sweating in your presence. He's hearing the word of God that can change. But because he has not gotten to Canaan, while you are sitting down kicking away men, you will see a quick work that God will do in him. All of a sudden, Saul, who was a slave, or a, 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 somebody else, will come in power and glory. And you will now look and say, Ah, oh God, why didn't you show me a vision that this guy would change so fast? Say mindset. Say it. Some of you are already angry. It's too early. I've not started preaching. It's too early this night. Could it be that there is a mindset that is frustrating you? There are many pastors who are suffering and struggling in ministry because their mindsets about ministry will never change. I said it last week. They are looking for lifting quickly. They want everybody to call them a pastor. You call them Aaron, they say, Aaron, you didn't add pastor. That's a mindset because you think that is the title that gives the dignity. He said, if you call yourself the children of Abraham, do the works of Abraham. Prove that you are the children of Abraham indeed. You don't move around saying, I'm an apostle. I'm a prophet. I'm a teacher. He said, let her works speak for her at the gates. Who is God speaking to tonight? Your mindset is limiting him. Your mindset is limiting God. Your mindset is limiting God. Every brother that comes to marry you, something happens and he leaves. We have prayed for you. We knew the day you were delivered. So we are sure you are delivered. But things have not changed. That means there is a mindset problem. Listen, it's not everything that is demons. You must learn to take responsibility. Many of us receive solace in the fact that demons, when you hear them say it's not your fault, you say, yes, I've always known. It's your fault this night. You must take responsibility. I've always known. From my father's house, they want to kill me. But you were delivered. Everybody saw that God changed you. Why have things not changed? Because your mindset is a bigger demon. An antichrist that is standing between Canaan and Egypt. Hallelujah. There are Christians who still cheat in the exam hall. They say, forget it. I saw a pastor doing it with my own eyes. Ah, I even know him. If I mention his name, I saw him. So what? Hallelujah. What about living all kinds of immoral life? In the world, the primary purpose of relationship is for immorality. It's not even for marriage. It's just a, an official way of looking for a partner to be sleeping around with so when a guy thinks he doesn't have enough courage to look around for ladies he goes to find somebody and say okay we're in a relationship they don't even know where they are going hallelujah and there are believers who love god some of you are here you are looking at me you see i'm not condemning you but i'm saying that 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 gone must come face to face with the word and when it comes one must bow you cannot embrace these things and say let's go together it can go we can walk it no you cannot walk it light and darkness cannot stay in the same place don't say it does not matter let me tell you the truth if you want to see the authentic glory of god in your life no it matters and i always say this because Many of us here are young people. Don't let anybody fool you and say everybody is doing it. No, sir. There are people who have tapped into a higher law. The Bible says, who shall ascend to the hill of the Lord? Until you climb that hill, it does not look like it's possible. Are you getting my point? I counsel people. I talk to people. And there are people who come and say, I love God, but I women hey I, I can't see women i don't how, is, is it really true that there are people who are keeping themselves it's not by determination hallelujah 
if it's by determination, maybe I would have had children that, that would do children's service for koinonia. But there is a grace that takes you. So although you are human, people say, I beg, Jare, you are flesh and blood. No, but there is a spirit that lives inside you. The Bible says, know ye not that your body, listen, choose to believe this this night. Don't let it sound childish to you. Choose to believe. If it was not possible, God would be a wicked person for putting that as a principle. Hallelujah. Transformation. There are some of us who can kill for money. That's your own mindset. You overcame ladies from bed. You don't even have a problem with ladies. Because you, you want to make it. Even if a lady stands naked in your front, once there's no money on her, you are living. You are not. The devil, can, the devil has been defeated when it comes to that one. But money. Ha ha. You can be dying if they wave money, you come back to life. There are people like that. They love money. They can just put money on their table and just be looking at it like this. They are not using it. It's, it's, doing, it's like a drug they are taking. Your worst time in church is when they say giving. Of all sorts, even if they don't mention you, the fact that somebody else is going to drop money, you take it past now. You are not giving, but just seeing that money is leaving somebody, it's, it's paining you. Something is moving in your body. Advise this guy to take it back. It's a spirit. It's a dangerous spirit. Hallelujah. There are many of us who have certain mindsets of laziness. Laziness. Hallelujah. A man will sleep till one o'clock in the afternoon. You are a man. When do you want to marry next year? Till one o'clock you are still sleeping. And you will see one of our sisters who has been trusting God. Preparing herself like a bride for a very nice person. You just believe that because we say hug one another in Koinonia. It gives you a license to just get up carelessly. And just go and meet a sister and say, Shebi, they say, let's get to know one another. No. Are you preparing for that future? I'm challenging you tonight. Say transformation. What mindset have you refused to drop down? Romans chapter 12. Can you imagine that I've not even touched my message? Hallelujah. Romans chapter 12. Say the word of the Lord is changing me. Say it is changing me. It's building me. Romans chapter 12. Okay. Let's just turn there. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Verse 2, and be not conformed to this world, but be ye what? Be ye, how do you get transformed? By the renewing of your mind. You get transformed when you take your mind to the theater of the spirit and a surgery is performed the spirit of god himself and the surgical knife is the word of god that is able to cut across the bones and the marrows and it opens you up and begins to edit your life and when it is done you come back a brand new person Hallelujah. There are many of us, those around you, who are unbelievers. There's no pressure that your life is bringing to them. In fact, they are, more, they are comfortable. 
a guy can i'm not talking of condemnation and just pointing fingers at people and say you are going to hell no but that there is an illumination that your transformation can bring to anybody that is not serious with god that if somebody's prayer life is dying he doesn't even need to tell you all he needs to say is can i come and spend weekend in your house or in your room and they are so sure that at the end of three days something will change in their lives hallelujah there are some channels if you are walking in sin you will never want to turn to those channels perpetually 24 hours you will hear a message almost immediately within a space of five minutes that will judge you dove tv redeemed rtm you know that once you are doing something wrong you want to look for another channel that can accommodate what you are doing when you turn to those ones you hear papa adebo just give five minutes something is already flogging the nonsense in you can your life be like that that people are gossiping and and talking stories about others and as soon as you step in everybody just keeps quiet because a true ambassador stepped in one who will not compromise not that when you step in say hey come add add to this discussion what what were you even saying that day no hallelujah that in your office when they are mentioning men and women of integrity your name must be mentioned and they know that no if you want to throw this person try it another way bribery will not work even if it means him being demoted just forget it there is no issue of having a meeting with him it will not happen come on now listen if this is not happening in this place then we are wasting our time i don't care how many people fall on the ground roll on the ground even if you float in the air if it does not translate to transformation in your life then we are lying somewhere hallelujah so is your mindset changing ask your neighbor say is your mindset changing what did he tell you ask him who can verify that you are changing you can't call somebody that you bought something for in the afternoon to verify whether you are changing or not the answer will certainly be yes your enemy is the only person with the right to testify whether you truly fear God or not it was Satan that came to testify about Job is that true Satan himself he said ah no come on now I've seen a man Job Satan the father of all liars a man's integrity compels Satan to tell the truth he said I know I'm a liar I can twist things but this one there's nothing I can say against this man may that be your testimony that somebody can look at you and say I know I hate Ken let me tell you I hate him but when you are talking about a man who is a Christian indeed I'm an I am an unbeliever as you see me I don't fear God I let me go to hell but I can tell you this person have you seen people like that they don't respect God they look at you and say see see cigarette in my pocket but I can point to you who are the real men of God and you even be talking it was in Antioch when unbelievers called this set of people Christians. Those who were behaving like Christ. Not religiously. Something had happened to them. See, if your mindset does not change and you are trying to fake it, it will frustrate you. Are you getting what I'm saying? One day you will be tired. If you don't have a revelation of giving and you are giving, 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 one day when there's nobody, you say, Kai, I'm tired, honestly. Thank God this, my wicked roommate, is not going to follow me for Koinonia today. I'm tired. That's how you can see many people serve in the body of Christ. 
immediately they leave to another geographical location within two or three months they've changed in a way you'll be like ah, uh -uh. this brother used to lead prayers what suddenly happened they really did not get it i'm telling you there is a way you get it it becomes like a cancer in you no matter how much you fall you can't go too far the, the fraternity is too much it's like a cult when you see people claim to love god and two months away from an environment of god's presence they just change they really did not get it you can be among believers i hope you know doing what everybody is doing but everybody knows the foundation and the root where he's standing and the bible says let he that stands take heed lest he falls so number one transformation number two three things that must happen in your life you're ready number two is that your life must bear fruits it must produce results write it fruits results the fruit in a tree is a sign that that tree has been well nourished and that it is alive and growing jesus caused a fig tree not because he did not see green leaves he caused the fig tree because it was taking up nutrients from the earth but it was not producing fruits your life must prove that god is at work in you not just by transformation transformation is good we talk about character and conformity but there must be results in your life everyone say results bishop oyedeko said the end of every argument is proof you don't argue with proof are you getting my point now when john the baptist sent that they should go and ask jesus are you the messiah or should we expect another jesus did not even answer he just turned started healing the sick casting out devils he said go and tell john what you have seen is this not the evidence that was given to him in the wilderness that the messiah would do now see me doing it why are you asking again hallelujah when you are a christian and you are excellent in your job they give you a task to do you do it with with a dimension of intelligence that is not known to those people there is a proof there are you hearing what i'm saying when you keep loving god and you get to a point look let me tell you if you serve god with time everything around your life should change i'm not one of those people who believes that you should just sit down of course in the process there are lots of things to contend against but with time there must be fruit that sign upon your life that god is with you even if you work for the devil even if you work for the devil one day ultimately he's going to destroy you but at least in the interim you will reap the 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 evidence of allegiance is that true there are all kinds of worldly people who are bowed to Dagon. And although they are going to hell if they do not repent, but in the interim, they are enjoying heaven on earth. At least that's the consolation to keep them. Satan took Jesus to a mountain and said, Jesus, if you will bow to me, I promise you. I, I have I've not started preaching, no. That's the problem. You will just look now and see that it's past nine. I wish there was a way I can throw all these clocks out of this, this place. There's so much in my spirit to share. Hallelujah. Everybody say results. Say proofs. If you claim God is calling you in a healing ministry, it's okay that when we start, nothing is happening. But with time, there should be the signature of God upon your healing ministry. I do not know any healing evangelist who organizes a crusade and God does not confirm it. If he's a true healing evangelist, somebody should be sick. Somebody should arise from the wheelchair. I do not know one true person who carries the apostolic spirit of God, who struggles with fear and timidity and does not have the power of faith 
and the work of God in their lives. I do not know one person like that, except they are just talking stories. Are you getting what I'm saying? Say after me, in the name of Jesus, may my life produce results. Many of you, this is the level you are right now. The reason why nobody has listened to you or subscribed to your ideologies is because they have not seen the benefit. Is that true? And, 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 and I want to be very honest with you. Benefit in every area of life. Financially, maritally, job-wise, in every area of your life. No matter how critical people are, let me tell you, proof can close the mouth of anybody. Are you getting me? You can criticize a man. The greatest way to respond to your critics is not by answering. Don't waste your time. They are determined not to understand. Keep trailing the proofs. Let the works keep speaking at the gates. A point will come, those they are talking to will say, I'm tired of hearing your stories. You waste your own proof. Hallelujah. When Jesus hung upon the cross, about to die, the Bible says the atmospheric condition, the climate just changed. And those who looked there, they just remembered and truly they acknowledged. Even in death, they saw something. There are many of us, it will just take one proof. Everybody say one proof. One proof for every unbeliever in your house to bow down. They've grown in poverty. They've suffered in poverty. Although that's not an ultimate reason to push them to God. But trust me, prosperity can bring men to God. Hallelujah. When every herbal medicine has failed, when every blood substance, they, they tied in the leather and they told your father to choke in the pocket of all his trousers to bring prosperity. When he has put it in every pocket and it refused to bring prosperity and you come teaching the principles of the kingdom and things begin to change, come on now. You don't argue with proofs. Hallelujah. May your life produce results in the name of Jesus Christ. May you not be like the barren fig tree, a fig tree with green leaves. That means they are seeing you coming for koinonia every week, every week. To an extent that others can look at you and mock you and say, where is your God? I prophesy to you, your God is coming through for you. In the name of the Lord Jesus, your God is coming through to silence every Pharaoh that attempts to mock your God. Your life will produce results in the name of Jesus Christ. Results. I believe in results. I believe in results. Many of you are here by the grace of God, not necessarily because you love me. Some of you don't even love me at all. You don't plan to. It's just that you need the results. <laughs> Hallelujah. But you are still welcome. And the power of God is such that the results can be reproduced again and again and again. That's why I love the anointing of the Holy Spirit. You don't need to refrigerate it. You don't need to give your neighbor to keep it for you and collect it on. Except you use talisman. That's why I worship him. Take his presence and his glory out of my life. Many of you will see me on the street and pass as if you just saw a tire on the floor. That's why I feel sad for people who want to come out of inferiority and complex and kick, they kick God out of the equation and they believe they'll be able to rise without him. Impossible impossible if you are tired of your condition the greatest way is to embrace god first hallelujah because god will take you out of every situation results your life must bear fruit in the name of the lord jesus christ say my life must bear fruit go ahead pray in one minute pray in one minute i don't just want us to talk it as stories, my life must bear fruit.
My life must bear fruit. My life must bear fruit. I've been born again for many years. No soul has come to the kingdom as a result of my life. Lord, I'm tired. I've been praying for the sick. I don't have one verifiable testimony. Let this change, oh God. Everyone I've prayed for for breakthrough, they've returned with worse situations instead of making it better. But Lord, I've told them you are with me. Change my story. The finance of my family has not changed. Lord, I'm not loving you just because of finances. But if my finances change, my father will follow me to church. If my finances change, if my loved ones get admission, they will come to know you. For their sake, oh God, let there be results in my life. Please pray. I sense that God wants us to pray on this issue. My life must bear fruit. My life must bear fruit. My life must bear fruit, oh God. I'm tired of a barren and unfruitful Christian life. My ministry is not growing. Pray because there's no proof. My God, people come and they leave. If there are real miracles, if there are real transformations, they will come and stay. Everyone mocks my family in spite of our spirituality because they have not seen God change our level. Turn again, oh God, the captivity of Zion like the streams of the Negev. Let men see an evidence that God is with us. Pray. Say, Lord, let the marriage come even if it is to prove that Jesus is alive, to prove that the witches and the wizards and the devils in my village do not have the final say. Lord, I know that there is a cause of poverty that lingers in my family, but I've confessed your word that it is broken. Let it show in my life as a testament so that idol worship can stop in my family. We have no right to tell men to stop going to harvest if we cannot produce the proofs that God is with us. We have no right to tell people to stop going to the devil to get children if we cannot heal the body. We have no right to tell people to stop going to the devil to get money if we cannot prove that God prospers people. Lift your voice and pray. Get angry. Change my story. Change my story. Oh God, I have served you in spite of the result but tonight i hold on to you change my story pray koinonia there is a spirit of intercession that has come upon the house pray change my story change my story change my story prove a point with my life make me an object of prayer silence the voice of wicked men many are they that rise up against me many are they that say where is his help but i will lift up my eyes to the hills from whence cometh my help my help comes from the maker of the heavens and the earth oh god let there be a difference between those that serve you and those that do not serve you come on saints of god travel for your destiny there must be an evidence you have been transformed but there are no results there are no results men have a right to speak against your god 
Lord, hasten my miracle. Come on, pray. Hasten my miracle. Hasten the breakthrough. Please pray. God is answering people in this place. Lord, give my father the job. Although my auntie is past menopause, give her a child as a sign and a wonder that God is alive. Although my sister is 40 years old, give her a husband that men may know that God is alive. Although my father was sacked from the job, give him another one, oh God, to prove that you may be a prophet over my family. Lord, you have vowed to increase my greatness. Produce results in my life. Come on, Koinonia, pray. Produce results in my life that can silence men. Produce results that can prove that my God is alive. I love him more than the results. But in this season, I desire to see the results. Command it. Command it. Increase my greatness. Let the blind see through my hands, O oh God. For your glory. Pray. Let the wheelchair arise to silence principalities and powers. Open the heavens, O oh God, and let prosperity come upon my life where I'll be rejected. No man wants to identify with me. Make me an eternal excellency. Come on, are you praying, Koinonia? And a joy of many generations. Hallelujah. 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 We'll take one prayer point before we settle down. You're going to pray and say, Lord, every power that stops my miracles from the heavenlies so that men will keep mocking my God. Tonight, I command you to give way. Come on, lift your voice and pray. Daniel prayed for 21 days. The angel came and said, Daniel, from the first day that you set yourself to pray, your prayers were answered. But the prince of Persia, the prince of Persia, the prince of Persia, pray, I subdue powers. I subdue powers that operate in the heavenlies, territorial spirits. I subdue powers in the heavenly realms. I subdue powers, workers of evil. You must bow. There is fire in my life. There is fire in my destiny to burn every chaff, everything God has not planted. Shake it off. Shake it off. Shake it from your life. I shake away witchcraft. I shake away divination. I shake away enchantment. Come on now. Shake it off in the name of Jesus. No power can stand. I am an infant of fire. No enchantment, no curse can stand against my destiny. Pray. Your prayer will bear fruits. It will produce results. Pray. The effectual, fervent prayer. Repetekete is our season of greatness. We wage war against poverty. We wage war against sickness. We wage war against the works of darkness. It's our season to arise. 
Come on now, pray. Make your life too hot for the devil. Make your life too hot for witches and wizards. Make your life too hot for wicked spirits. Break the yoke from your neck. Break the yoke from your shoulders. Shake it off. Shake it off. Shake it off. Tell the devil, I stand in my priestly and my prophetic office tonight. I confront you by myself. I confront you by myself. I confront you by myself. Hallelujah. Listen. Listen, listen, there must come a time in your life where you stop getting afraid and rise up and say, Satan, I've had the word enough. I don't need to wait for Friday again. Come into my room like Mount Camel. Let's solve this problem once and for all. They've not laid hands on me for nothing. They've not laid hands on me for nothing. One more time, we are going to pray. Come on, pray. This is breakthrough prayers. This is breakthrough prayers. I sense the spirit of prayer and supplication. <laughs> I must break through on every side. There is power in prayer. There is power when the saints pray. There is power when you pray. Make contact with the spirit. There is power. Pray. Enough is enough. Where is the devil? Where is the devil? By the power of prophetic prayer, resist the devil. He will flee. Hallelujah. I feel an open heaven. I know when there is an open heaven. Hallelujah. 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 Listen. I taught you on the speaking blood. We are going to apply the blood of Jesus. You are going to say, Satan, this is the price to release my destiny. I invoke the blood. Come on now, Koinonia. I invoke the blood. Every sacrifice that has been born and made, I invoke the blood. The blood of Jesus. I invoke the blood. I challenge the gates of hell through the blood. The blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. The Christ. I command breakthrough. I release it. 
Listen, come, let me have four people. Let me show you what prayer does in the spirit. Let me just have four people stand here. Just, just turn like this, facing, stand. Just stand behind, watch this. Watch this. Someone come and hold this. Anybody? This is your miracle. This is your breakthrough, but watch this. Stand there. Please shift forward. Paul said, listen. He said, a great door and an effectual has been opened unto me. He said, but many, many, many are the adversities. These are the spirits. He said, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers against rulers of the darkness of this world against spiritual wickedness in heavenly places watch this the bible says if any man afflicted let him pray if any man afflicted let him pray when you begin to pray watch this there is a force there is a force of the spirit that begins to mount pressure 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 on all of these things is an ability of the spirit you push through barriers by the power of god's spirit until you take what belongs to you listen listen that's why god gives you one of the reasons why he gives you the prayer language of tongues praying in your understanding will weary you after 20 minutes the bible says you may not understand the dynamics on how to confront this spirit but when you switch to that prayer language the holy ghost hey yeah, 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 yeah. the holy ghost listen when you begin to pray something in the spirit come on pray pray When your prayer life rises, the devil must let you go. If you don't pray, the devil will let you go. If you don't pray, the devil will Hallelujah. See, listen. There is a way you can pray. You will know when you break through. The reason is, the truth is, many believers don't pray. Hallelujah. 
there is a way you can pray you will know your spirit is lifted from that realm you will know an audacity comes upon you you know you can shake off evil Hallelujah. One more prayer point. Before you sit down, you're going to say in the name of Jesus, I take back everything the devil has taken from my family. Prophesy. Shita. Hallelujah. 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 The hand of the Lord is upon me. And I want to prophesy. As I prophesy, the power of God will be causing breakthroughs and restoration. The anointing of the Spirit is strong upon me. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I command every power holding anyone down right now in the name of jesus i command you let them go let them go right now let them go i prophesy breakthrough i command breakthrough in the name of the lord jesus i command breakthrough to your family breakthrough financial breakthrough Academic, in your job, in the name of Jesus, Amen. open heaven, open heaven, it's your season to rise, it's your season of greatness, every power stopping you, we challenge it tonight, in the name of Jesus, please sit down, God bless you, be seated. Your life must become uncomfortable for anything that is not of God. See, I tell you the power of God is, I sense such a strong anointing resting on people. As I teach, God is going to be visiting people in very strong ways. Enough is enough. God gave us a word. He said, I will increase your greatness and comfort you on every side. I'm not sure I can go into the details of tonight's teaching, but... I hope I'll be able to touch. I really have a very serious revelation that I want to share. Let's see how far God can help us wherever we stop. Hallelujah. Genesis 1. 
verse 26. The Lord gave us a word that this year for us is a season of light and dominion. It's not just a word like many ministries have a word at the beginning of the year. Hallelujah. Light. It's a day that certain Nephtha and Zebulun have seen a great light. A great light. Genesis 1 verse 26. And God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion let them this man i hope you know that when he was speaking the woman was still in the man because man adam not the name of a man dust hallelujah man was first created body has thou prepared for me hallelujah and then he brought about a separation between the man and the woman. But before then, he blessed them. And he said, let them have dominion. Now listen. It is in the character of the spirit that the same word that brings you prophecy is the same word that prepares the way for that prophecy to come to pass. Are you getting my point? The Bible says, when at the brook Cherith, when the brook dried, he told Elijah the prophet, he said, get thee, go down to Zarephath. He said, there I have commanded a widow to feed thee. But the woman did not sound like God had informed her a prophet was coming. However, the same word that took Elijah to Zarephath was the same word that softened the heart of the woman. So when God gives you a word, the word follows you through and makes sure that the path is clear until that word comes to pass. Are you getting what I'm saying? So when God said, let man have dominion, that means there must have been a provision for that man to access what it takes to walk in that dominion. Hallelujah. God does not just speak empty talk. It's like sending a man to the market and not giving him money. So let's see how God equipped man to exercise dominion in reality. Hallelujah. Genesis chapter 2. I wish we had time, but I'll just touch briefly wherever. Thank you, Jesus. Verse 8. And the Lord planted a garden eastward in Eden. And there he put the man that he had formed. And out of the ground made the Lord to grow every tree that is pleasant in the sight. And good for food. Now watch this. Everybody look up. The Bible says God made every other tree to grow from the ground. Are you following me? However, the Bible says there were two trees. Those trees did not grow from the ground. Follow me. Are you getting my point? The Bible says God made to grow every tree pleasant to the eyes. That is good for food. Then it says the tree of life also. Also. In the midst of the garden. And then it says and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Please follow me. I want to teach you powerful spiritual laws that can help you to walk in dominion. To eat of every tree, including the tree of life. Are you getting my point? The first revelation I want you to have is that man's eating the tree of life was not for hunger. Are you getting me? Adam could not be hungry. He was not in the fallen state. Are you getting me? In the realm of the spirit, you don't eat for hunger for hunger you eat for impartation and knowledge that's what food does in the spirit food does not satisfy hunger no no when you eat food like let's say in spiritually now i'm not talking of all these demonic things that people you saw yourself eating sweet in the dream that's not what i'm talking about hallelujah you don't eat in the spirit to satisfy hunger 
food does two things for you in Eden's atmosphere. One, it gives you knowledge. Two, it gives you impartation. Hallelujah. That's why the prophet was giving the word and he ate it. When he ate it, it did something to him. Are you getting what I'm saying? Now watch this. Everybody write the mystery of forbidden knowledge. That's not the topic. I want to show you what the two trees were supposed to represent. One was the tree of life. The other was called the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Another word was the it, it carried what we call the mystery of forbidden knowledge. The word mystery just means hidden truth about a knowledge that God does not want his people to know. Not because he hates them. You must understand this. God does not want us to know everything. And then I will show you what the angels came and did. The fallen angels, when they came, they did something to the daughters of men. Are you getting me? They took from this forbidden knowledge and they began to feed mankind with it. Ah. Time, 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 time. Praise God. God categorically warned man. He said the trees in the garden of Eden, every time you eat them, they will do something to you. Are you getting what I'm saying? So, if you eat of the tree of life, it will keep giving you the revelation and the insight to walk in dominion. It gives life. Eating of that tree gives life. Are you getting me? That's the mystery of eternal life, adumbrated by that tree. That's why when Jesus came, he said, ah, uh ah, -uh, man shall not live by bread alone. If man wants to live, he must keep eating something. Are you getting me? So, walking experientially for eternal life to be culminated in you, there is something that must be done in you. Please listen. And this is where I want to balance. This is what, where we get the concept of immortality. How many of you have heard all those teachings of immortality? Now, unfortunately, many people brought the teachings, but they did not understand how the operation. Immortality is not something you claim. Immortality is a product of eating of the tree of life again and again. It causes eternal life, not just to translate from your spirit to your soul, but to happen in your body. And that's where you say, oh, death, where is your sting? Are you getting what I'm saying? Now, it so happens that our rate of transformation is so slow. Are you getting me now? That the degradation of the sin nature in our body catches up with us before these capsules of rejuvenation find expression in us. This is why, although the law of immortality is at work, not many people will ever enter it. The secret is not just prayer for long life. The secret is intercoursing with this eternal life. That was how Adam was supposed to live forever. Are you getting my point now? So by eating of the tree of life, that was why when he fell, God said, no, you can't eat of the tree of life again because the tree of life keeps you in whatever state you are and stops you from dying. If he ate of the tree of life, salvation redemption would not be possible again so god drove him out are you seeing that now god didn't just drive him because he was angry he drove man out of the garden because he loved him praise the lord what is this i want to explain to you what is this mystery of forbidden knowledge look up how many of you have heard of certain books called the books of moses right 10 books of Moses, 11 books of Moses. How many of you have heard of all these extra biblical references that were written by Egyptians and written by all kinds of people? Have you heard of those kinds of things? How many of you have heard of people that lived long ago in mountains who wrote certain books that were found? Now listen, if I don't teach you this because the Lord began to reveal to me that this is the strategy the devil is bringing. When the angels, 
Do you know why God did not want man to know? I hope you know that Adam never knew. Adam never knew that before his coming, there was a history. Hallelujah. He had never eaten of the tree that gives the knowledge of good and with it comes evil. Are you getting me? Adam was supposed to eat of the tree of life and continue his intimacy with God and reproduce children after his kind. When Satan came into the garden, Satan did not make Adam sleep with a dog. No, he knew that that would not get the agenda done. He said, man, come. There is one tree I want you to touch. Just taste it once. It will do something to you. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Everybody say forbidden knowledge. This is the information that through sorcery and witchcraft, please hear me, the fallen angels and all of these aliens and all of these devilish spirits, they downloaded and brought to inhabitants in the earth. Are you getting me? These were the informations that were given men like Nimrod. So they had super intelligence about certain things. Are you following me? I want to shock you. I hope you will believe me. Look at me. Did you know that most of our technological advancements, are you getting me, are as a result of fraternity with beings that were not in the earth? Are you getting me? It had to be a supply of a level. It's not just human discipline. Don't mind what all those books tell you. Just be hardworking and think well. No, sir. Those people had interactions with beings. Is that how did Solomon become extremely rich and blessed? What happened to him? God visited him from another realm. Is that not true? They had a conversation. Listen, this conversation is still happening in the earth till today. Are you following me? Let me share with you something very briefly. I hope you believe me. The Bible says Jesus was giving the parable of the wheat and the tear. Is that true? He said, while men, everybody, while men, hold on. He says, while men slept, something happened in the earth realm where men were sleeping. Now, the sleeping is not bad. We always use that sleep to mean while men were backsliding. No, he meant literal sleep. That means there is something that cannot happen when men are awake. Are you getting me? Jesus was telling us something powerful. He says the moment men sleep, some beings can walk into the earth. And he said the enemy quickly comes plant something and goes his way so you wake up with a growth that was not there before you slept I, is somebody following me what happened who came and put it there while men slept are you seeing why the bible says the keeper of israel neither nor He says every time men sleep something happens in this earth realm there are certain beings that come into the earth realm that's why people sleep in the night and in their dream realms they have all kinds of encounters with beings and animals and all kinds of things happen from intercourse to eating to every kind of thing and they wake up the next day only for them to fail at work or fail in exams something happened while men the psalmist saw this in psalm 91 and he says thou shalt not be afraid of the arrows that fly by day right nor the noisome pestilence but many believers are dull of understanding Dominion. Dominion is not just a function of I claim it. There is spiritual intelligence that can bring you into that position where you walk in dominion. Are you hearing what I'm saying, please? Are you getting something? 
So, this tree of the knowledge of good and evil was never supposed to be consumed by man. Are you getting me? Look, look at me. When you open that book, you will find good, but you will not know when evil is planted in the good. Are you getting what I'm saying? That's why a pastor can go and read the 12th book of Moses or go and read Scientology and be looking at it and saying, wow, so candles or certain things can do something to witches and wizards. Everybody say forbidden knowledge. Are you getting that now? And then they read certain zodiac books and they look and they say, why not I add this knowledge to what I already have? Are you getting what I'm saying? And they will seem to walk powerfully. That is the forbidden knowledge. The tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Sometimes we celebrate it. What do we call it? Rema. Is that true? And we bring all kinds of things. I've heard about men of God and prophets and all kinds of people who do every kind of nonsense in the body of Christ. All kinds of magic happening everywhere. I once heard of a man of God who came for a program and he was preaching and he called somebody. He said, look at me. The person who looked at him became blind at once. Yes, completely blind at once. Members were clapping. People were running to come and drop seed. I don't know what they were tapping into, but they were running and everybody was happy. Watch this. And then after the guy preached, 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 he did everything and then he prayed again and the guy was open. And he said, for that reason, everything that is closed in everybody's life, you know, I open it and you see everybody just shouting amen. Listen. Let me tell you. Listen. Listen. Will people get results? They will get tremendous results. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Because the laws that have been operated are valid spiritual laws. But this is the point. Because it was not initiated and sponsored by the Spirit of God. Although it is correct knowledge, it is called witchcraft. So it's not about what produces result. It's about the Spirit of God initiating and sustaining that process. Hallelujah. There are many teachings coming to the body of Christ. Men and women of God who went to lock themselves to pray for three days and seven days or whatever. And in the midst of this prayer, because many people did not exalt the word above prophecy, they had visitations, but they were not of God. However, they were not visitations of inhabitants of the earth. And they came and committed to them power and gave them all kinds of things. And they came out from all of those experiences. And you see power, you see anointing, but it is not initiated and sponsored by the Spirit. And the sign is number one. The glory never goes to God. Such kinds of people never give God the glory because it is part of the agreement. Are you following me now? It is God's desire that we grow. The Bible even said knowledge shall increase. But you must guard. When the table is set before you, you are only permitted to eat of the tree of life. There is a kind of knowledge that only puffs up. Have you seen people? Hold on. I want to say a few things that will challenge you. Have you seen a lot of people? Please, I don't mean this for criticism or anything. Have you seen a lot of people who got mad as a result of prayer? Have you, have you seen those kinds of things? That somebody got to pray and he started praying until they took him to the psychiatry and locked him. I remember a lady years ago. This lady was praying in tongues seemingly for about almost 48 hours. I was there. ABU secure. This girl was just praying, praying, praying. She wouldn't listen to anybody. I wish I knew what I know now. And the thing confuses the body of Christ. Hallelujah. 
Everybody say forbidden knowledge. Men of God, if you are in ministry here, you have to be very careful. That, that insatiable lust for rema and revelation, you must guard carefully. And let this, that's why walking in the spirit is the secret. It gives you life. When you walk in the flesh, you may learn a lot of principles that although they are powerful, it leads men to death. So the more revelation a man is getting, the more he's dying. Not to self, dying as a result of the absence of light. See, this is how you know is one character to know that a man is not of God. When you compare the rate of revelation versus the rate of transformation, when there is so much word, conferences happening, conventions happening, meetings happening, rema upon rema, Bible study, all kinds of things, yet you do not see that that word is chaff. It lacks the life to build people. There is error. I hope somebody is learning something here. God put two trees. And all the trees can supply knowledge. For one, it is the knowledge that brings life. There are certain teachings on deliverance that does not bring life. Is that true? There are certain teachings on deliverance that brings people into bondage. Because people added Bible knowledge plus confessions that they got from people who were once witches and wizards. Is that true? And they added everything. And they say, if you want the devil to run away from you, once it's nine o'clock, wear red. That, that one is not in the Bible. You see that? That is, that is deception dimension there. I, I, is somebody following what I'm saying? I apologize if maybe these are the tenants of your church or your ministry. I really apologize. I love the body of Christ, but I have to teach you the truth. So, there is the biblical concept of deliverance, for instance. Then there are others who have spent their entire life interviewing seemingly witches and wizards, begging for audience with herbalists to explain to them the realm of the spirit, knowing that Satan is the father of all liars. Are you getting my point now? And it is on the strength of those information they have built their prayer ministries or built a lot of things so when you want to pray for somebody you look and say uh -uh, i can't pray for you like this you are wearing a black shoe change it into a special kind of slippers that you wear when you enter my my this thing for the power to work this one is astrology and witchcraft is somebody getting what i'm saying or you get all kinds of candles with different colors, this flame, that flame, this flame, and you say, now come and sit in the midst of it and just be calm as I drive this spirit. Uh-uh. This is called transcendental meditation. This is witchcraft. Hallelujah. Yet, you come and sit there in the midst of that candle. Something suddenly happens to you and you start taking first in the class. All of a sudden, your intelligence is heightened. You think beyond your level. And because you're... Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you. Are you following my story, please? Because you are getting results, you will be encouraged. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Be careful because many people are eating of the forbidden tree they are eating right now today here and now they are getting access to knowledge that seems to be producing results thank you but that knowledge is not of God maybe some of us right here as you are sitting down are already in these deceptions the moment you read those books although they are blowing your mind but something in your spirit starts checking. The Holy Ghost is telling you, uh -uh, when did you get into this? When did you get into this? And you see, these books are in our libraries. You can get them online. Many of you have watched every kind of thing. You see a man 
who has supernatural ability to listen to plants and animals and you sit down there are all kinds of books people research online how to hear the language of plants and animals and they put all kinds of codes they say recite it by 12 or 1 many christians you get up carry your big head and stand in front of the mirror and now recite it the last you recite it and just wake up and see that it's morning you slept something happened to you you may not know what happened again anytime god wants to take in and bring out of a man sleep happens and god calls adam to sleep hallelujah are you understanding this we're talking about dominion through in, through spiritual intelligence the knowledge that leads to death i'm going to share with you very importantly very quickly two laws even if it's just in five minutes, wherever we stop, that's it for the night. Two important spiritual laws that can help us. I'm committed to making sure that God grants us spiritual intelligence, that we have knowledge. This is what makes you strong in the spirit. Prayer is good, but it's not just enough to pray. You must have knowledge. So that when you see things, you know what laws are in place. And you know what to do about them. Knowledge takes away ignorance. Knowledge takes away shock from your life. So that you are not surprised about anything. When you hear that something has happened, you don't just panic. You understand. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Law number one. Is called the law of territory. If you want to walk in dominion, you must understand this law. The law of territory. Everybody say the law of territory. Look up, please. Dominion is territorial. Dominion is territorial. Even in the satanic organogram, they understand the jurisdiction and the boundaries of territories. There are spirits and principalities that do not operate in the earth realm. It's not their territory of work. Are you getting me? Every time they are on the earth realm, they are powerless. There are certain demonic operations that are territorial. I'll give you an instance. When you go to certain territories in this Nigeria, you see that there are certain traits and satanic operations given to that territory when you go outside of the territory it doesn't seem to have a hold on you again is that true and you go into another territory maybe it's drunkenness that is there you go to another territory maybe it's lust and immorality the operations of the kingdom and the operations of the spirit are territorial every man every kingdom citizen must know this abraham come out of your father's house come out of this territory where you are into a land that i will show you and if you do get to that land then i will bless you and you will be a blessing i will bless them that bless you and curse him that curses you and in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed but that will only happen if you leave one territory to another. Everybody say dominion is territorial. It's a spiritual intelligence that you must understand. Number two is that you must understand very, very clearly that in the place of your assignment, that is where you will exercise true dominion. Everything opens up for you at your assigned territory. There is an assigned territory where the spirit of dominion can walk in your life. Hallelujah. This is what a lot of people do not understand. Please look up. You must take out time to hear from God. Are you getting me? As to where he wants you to be at every season not just what you want him to do for you 
but where your blessings are territorial and Isaac sowed in that land Genesis 26 from verse 12 and Isaac sowed not just in any land although there was famine God told him this is your territory of dominion sow in that land a man of God may go to Zamfara and sit down and say Zamfara is not a lucrative place let me run to Abuja for ministry and he goes outside of territory are you getting my point and you see a man struggling in a land of plenty he's struggling yet you will see another man in the same Zamfara blessings coming from people those who are born again and those who are not born again because you are in the place of your territory say the law of territory many of us right now are at the face of our lives where we are trusting to know where God wants us to settle for every season it can change but that in every season there is a territory you miss your territory you will never walk in dominion because where God has assigned you he has commanded the ravens to feed you he has commanded the widow to attend to you are you getting what I'm saying I'll never forget when we finished the crusade in Joss and the PFN people called me in the particular local government in Joss and they said would you come and establish a branch of your ministry we'll give you an auditorium free and we'll give a few pastors to train I was happy I went to God God said you would die I told the PFN people God said I would die I'm really sorry I can't go as simple as that many of you would have said ah breakthrough God has bought her my bread and you will go there that's why you can see a ministry flourishing in a, in a particular place and then they move to a place and it's as though God did not call them again favor is a sign that you are in the right place when I sent thee lackest thou anything when I sent thee lackest thou anything by the grace of God at this level of ministry I can tell you I am sure that we are in the place assigned that's why it doesn't matter what venue we use whether it is blue roof whether it is charity and faith whether it's whatever there seems to be grace backing us so many people have called me one lady said them and their family members they are praying that I must come to Abuja they say relocate your level is bigger than Zaria I said I appreciate you but I remember there was a man called Ahitophel in scripture let people advise you out of your destiny they may be genuine they look at you and say Kai Zaria is it's too much for your level you say it's true just that what will we do and you start thinking and pack your load out of your destiny into a land where there is no assigned space for you you get into the land and there is no divine assignment for you there's no space for you you keep fighting and struggling with everybody Moses said, if your presence will not go with us, let us remain in this territory where we are sure that your presence is with us. This may be the answer to some of the tragedy of many of our parents. They got up because of looking for greener pastures. They just packed their load and said, Lagos, here we come. Ten years now, they are still suffering. Every door shuts at your face. It's a sign to go back for retreat and say, Lord, speak to me. Speak to me. Where am I missing it? Don't just let jobs and all of these things decide your destiny. I know this looks like a, a stupid statement and many people will criticize me for it. They'll say, are you joking? In Nigeria where there's no job, but you must be careful. You exercise dominion in the place of your territory your territory does not just mean the geography alone it means your jurisdiction of operation are you getting me if i go and enter the prophetic ministry right now as an office i'm not a prophet as an office i may operate in prophetic dimensions but god did not call me as a prophet in, in officially like your office your jurisdiction if i now say i'm going to come in and make sure I prophesy for everybody one by one. 
I give you two weeks. Many of you will start praying and fasting for me because you will start having all kinds of dreams of me missing it. You say, oh God, what is happening? This guy is missing this thing. There are many men of God who were called to be teachers or pastors, but they, they got outside of territory. Are you getting what I'm saying now? There are other people who were called into prayer ministries. Their anointing is the anointing for intercession. But they've now begun to teach wealth seminars and teaching all kinds of prosperity conventions. That's not wrong, except that you have come out of territory. Everybody say territory. You will only walk in your dominion if you confine yourself and limit yourself to your territory, your jurisdiction of operation. There are certain dimensions of ministry. If God instructs me to engage in, I will find graces that are called at the heart of that area and bring them. It doesn't matter whether I can preach more than them. It doesn't matter whether I have more miracles than them. Uh -uh. It's about the grace and the dominion. When a man is in his area of territory, you will exercise dominion freely. You see why a lot of pastors are struggling. You go to a church and copy what a man of God is doing. You do not know his, his ministerial packaging. Are you getting my point? So many people who are pastors trying to do the work of apostles, little persecution comes and they are crying. They cannot move forward because see, when God calls a man, he equips you according to the office. When you learn this law, you will walk in dominion. Absolute dominion. There are things I have no business doing. If God gives me an instruction, he will have to give me a special grace for it or direct me to the people who will administer that level of building to the body of Christ. Watch my knee calls it the limitation of the body. People struggle because they do not understand their jurisdiction of operation. Is someone getting blessed tonight? Your assigned territory. God has honored you in the area of catering. When it comes to catering, you walk in dominion there. The next thing you got up and you just heard that people are doing um, building materials and you just get up and go there. You say, I'm supplying building materials. Your first supply, there was trouble. Second supply, 10 years down the line, you are still struggling. Everybody say territory. Thank you, Jesus. The second law. And then we will pray. This one is very important. It is a law that you must believe in and walk in it. It's called the law of exchange. This is a powerful spiritual law if you must walk in dominion. Giving something you love for something you desire is called the law of exchange. The law of exchange. You laid aside your majesty, gave up everything for me, suffered at the hands of those you have created. You took all my guilt and shame when you died and rose again. Now today you reign. In heaven and now exalted. I really want to worship you, my Lord. You are my heart and I am yours. Forever and ever. I will love you. You are the only one who died for me. You gave your life to set me free. And so I lift my voice to you in adoration. Listen, how many of you have heard that a man gave up his ability to give birth to children for money? Have you heard of that? Everybody say the law of exchange. When you understand this law, you will know the reason why evil seems to happen in a place unhindered. When the Bible says an eye for an eye, have you heard that? Tooth for tooth. I've studied it. It's not like when I break your teeth, you will break back my own to revenge. Are you getting me? 
is called compensation. That means if I do something to you, you must take back something that can appease you to the equivalence of the offense. Are you getting what I'm saying? It's called the law of exchange. That's where we get trade by butter. I give you a cow. You must find something that is commensurate to the worth of that cow. Are you getting me? That's why when man fell, based on the justice of God, God looked around to see what can be given. He said, if I give Gabriel, it's not enough. If I give Michael, it's not enough. Do you know why? Because angels themselves are imperfect. I hope you know it. Angels excel in light. They excel in strength. But they are still imperfect. Do you want me to show you? Job. Let's look at it. One scripture. You are the one who said I should show you. Turn to the book of Job. Sorry about the time. We'll round up now. He could not give the angels because they are imperfect. Job 4. Please project it. Job 4, verse 18 and 19. I want us to read it together. Job 4. Can we hurry up? Our time is... Job 4. Everyone read. Want to read. He charges angels with what? Verse 19. He said even his servants, he didn't trust them. And even the angels, he charged them with foolishness. How much more a man that wants God to use him without being trained? <laughs> so God could not give Gabriel and Michael and all of these people. And so he looked at the perfect one, the sinless one, and said, you are the only one that can go as an exchange for what I desire. Please listen to me. The same principle Satan wanted to use for Jesus Christ. He took Jesus to the mountain and he said, bow to me. In other words, let me give you wealth and exchange it with your loyalty for me. Are you getting my point? Just bow to me. Since you are the expression of the Godhead, bow to me so that the Father will see you bowing to me and I can give you wealth. So when a man goes to meet a herbalist, he tells him, what are you going to give me in exchange? Please listen. I will tell you, this is the reason why many territories are powerful. This is why some of the terrorisms you see in Nigeria are powerful. They always give something in exchange for the authority to invade a territory. That's why they do it military might irrespective. Are you getting my point? When you come to God and say, Lord, I want you to use me. God says, what is the exchange for it? And he say, Lord, take my life. Have you heard that scripture that says, what shall it profit a man if he does what? And what? Loses his soul. That means, he said, Satan, let's do business. And Satan said, of course, I'm a good businessman. I will give you my soul. Give me the world. So that anywhere I do business, whether in Italy, whether in Dubai, let it work. So that I must be the governor of this state or I must be this, take my soul. So that I will be the reigning musician and nobody can stop me. And he says, all right, let's have the deal. And he says, take my soul. They have received the mark of the beast. That's the 666 there. It's not something that will be put on their hand. They have given their soul. They have received the mark. Are you getting my point? So Satan comes to you. What do you want to give in exchange? Please listen. Something 
must be given in exchange if you must walk in true dominion everybody knows this it's not a herbal strategy it's a spiritual strategy i'm walking in the anointing i'm walking in by the grace of god because i received this of grace but something went for it my life my will my ambitions my desires they were laid down that's why i wrote that song take all of me all of me you have my everything that's my deal with god you have my everything are you getting me so my entire life will give him glory the day i compromise on my own part of the deal his mercy will show up but if i walk in rebellion i have broken the deal that's the reason why a man can give an exchange he will say i will give you my firstborn only give me this political position when the firstborn is now born the people come and say oh yeah oh, we gave you the power we gave you the wife where is our firstborn and you say sorry i didn't realize that children are this nice i've changed my mind they say you've changed your mind we will see all of a sudden the child starts getting sick they must collect their child except the power of god intervenes this is the reason why many families are suffering people covenanted families in exchange for money kings covenanted their territories are you hearing what i'm saying they gave it in exchange for protection they gave it there are families that gave in exchange their fertility so no children can happen in that family there are families that traded boys they said there shall be no men take give us might what men would have done let the women in our family do but take all the men and you find out that no matter how people try they will never give birth to men they give birth to men they will die no matter what happens you just hear that he was taking fresh air outside a bike came and carried him are you hearing what i'm saying exchange see these laws are not old testament laws they are spiritual laws they are still working today here and now are you hearing what i'm saying this is the law that terrorists use before they ever carry an assignment they must take out time are you seeing the reason why every time they shed blood people become richer think about it the moment blood is shed somebody makes money exchange 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 are you seeing the reason why the sacrifice of solomon touched the lord he offered a thousand bond offerings it was an expression of his heart god could not stop he came down many of us may never walk in dominion because you are not ready to exchange your life for his life you are not ready to exchange your strength for his strength but tonight how many people are ready to say lord take everything if this is the price for your grace and your glory don't let anybody fool you and say there's no price you go to a herbalist and see if he will just give you power like that look at me there are men who sacrifice their wives for wealth true or false some christians right there are pastors who sacrifice their children for church growth there are pastors who sacrifice their members for expansion i've said it again and again nothing just happens the day jesus will come we have a long world film to watch that's when we will know that most of the things we call coincidences were not coincidences hallelujah listen let me tell you something i will never forget one time i was praying in the night years ago and i prayed and i was dedicating my body unto god i stripped myself the way my mother gave birth to me and i lay down on the floor i said lord let this body become a superconductor of your anointing if there is anything you can do to this mortal body let it carry your power this body cannot be used for sin and hell it, it, i dedicate it unto you and god said this is what you are giving me i will put my glory upon your life 
and somebody just comes and says, God, give me, give me, give me, give me, give me. And the, Lord, the demons are just looking and saying, look at all these ignorant people. These are the negotiations that many scientists did with aliens. Are you getting me? Many intelligent people. They said, give us, give us technology. Give us the wisdom you used and gave the pharaohs of old. Give us and let us do supernatural things. In exchange, we will give you the souls of men. We will give you mankind. We will give you a lot of things. And it's happening here in the earth. That's why you can see a man sitting down. All of a sudden, within two weeks, this man becomes a mysterious millionaire. Either God has done something to him or the devil has done something. There was an exchange somewhere. A man of God is sitting down and all of a sudden, power comes upon his life. He begins to do supernatural things. I tell you, there is an exchange. He has either gone to the throne of grace to exchange his life and say, Lord, take it. Take my life and use me for your glory. Or he has gone to a herbalist and said, take my firstborn. Or every two, two years, kill ten members from my church as a sacrifice and let the anointing keep rising. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord had anointed me to preach good tidings to the meek. He had sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, an opening of the prison to those who are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all that mourn to appoint unto those who mourn in Zion, to give unto them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they might be called the trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord. And then it ends with a dangerous statement. He said that he might be glorified that means in these things he will be glorified this is how he is glorified when the sick are healed when the captives are free when the garment of praise is given for the spirit of heaviness then he is glorified he said God is doing all of these things not just because your name is Joshua he's doing it that he might be glorified that's why we are singing that song I glorify your name so when we sing it he begins to heal he begins to bless so that he will be glorified the spirit of God is in this place tonight and I see different kinds of sicknesses and challenges but I need you to know that God is going to surprise you tonight the spirit of the Lord is upon me. Listen to me. Jesus was speaking to the disciples in John chapter 10 and verse 10. He said, the thief cometh not but to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Say after me, to steal, to kill, and to destroy. The thief comes to steal. Satan has always been in the ministry of destroying men. You can look at a life and know whether or not Satan has passed through that life. When Satan passes through a life, he leaves that life with sickness, oppression, poverty, all kinds of trauma. And our society is full of men and women who are living in fear, in bondage, in poverty. He said, the thief cometh not. Every time you see him in an environment, he steals all the blessings that the Lord has apportioned for his people. He kills. He destroys. When Satan steps into a family, it doesn't matter how hard working they are. He wrecks that family, wrecks everyone in that family. But the Bible says in Obadiah 21, it says, and saviors shall arise from out of Zion. It says, and they shall judge the mount of Esau. The Savior shall arise. 
men and women who are filled with the spirit of the living God and let me tell you something any gospel that cannot bring people from out of bondage are you listening to me from out of sickness from out of poverty from out of failure and defeat and bring them to a point where they represent the exact counsel of God that gospel is dead is just religion and is powerless we are sick and tired of powerless gospels and motivations he said when I came to you I did not come with the excellency of speech but in the demonstration of power that your faith might not be upon um, the wisdom of man but upon the power of God we live in a world where people are oppressed real oppression there are many of us represented here right now that our families are suffering so much the economic hardship and economic depression is telling so much on people sickness everywhere and the hospitals are doing their best but they are coming to a point where they are acknowledging the fact that there is only so much they can do there's got to be a voice that will arise there's got to be a generation that will say there is a solution otherwise our praying in tongues makes no relevance to the people in the world until they see the manifestation of the power of God that HIV is broken and it bows that cancer and sickness dies that deafness and lameness goes that a deformed heart is not just healed but a creative one a new one comes we are not talking of healing we are talking of a brand new one why will you need a, a healing of your heart when you can get a new one hallelujah that oppression from demons will live and will go genotypes changed when john the baptist said go and ask jesus is he the messiah jesus said go and tell him the blind see the deaf hear the cripples are walking that means this is the manifestation of the kingdom hallelujah and before we begin tonight I want to encourage you everyone listen please you have a responsibility to play the responsibility is that you must believe God the Bible says he that cometh unto God must believe that he is hallelujah now it's not the time to sit down and wonder and say can God the Bible says they limited God by saying can God make a way in the wilderness now it's not the time to watch other people and just wish now is the time to confront and to conquer and to say this sickness you're leaving me once and for all i don't care the stories they gave you around it now it's not the time to bring out your medical report and keep admiring it tonight is the time where you get angry the Bible says, woe unto them who are at ease in Zion. There are many of us who are oppressed by Satan in our, our lives and our families. This is a time where you challenge yourself and say, Lord, in this miracle service, I'm ready to chart a new course. There's no moving forward and coming backward. No. Can I tell you something about Satan? He hates me very much for this, but let me tell you. Satan is only as powerful to the degree to which your ignorance and disobedience permits him to be. Are you listening to me? Satan is only as powerful to the degree that your ignorance in the word of God or your disobedience to applying the principles that bring the blessings permit him. But Jesus said, I saw Satan fall like lightning. You see, it didn't say, I am seeing him falling. I saw it. It's past. He has fallen. Hallelujah. And so you must believe God tonight. Many of us are carrying requests. Some of them absolutely impossible situations. 
but can you take your eyes off those things and say lord i know i know that you are able many of us have gone to the hospital again and again and again and again and the doctors have said you would live with this i've shared my testimony again and again i had a fungal infection that affected me for a great portion of my life there was no hospital i didn't go to no kind of medication everything didn't work and god healed me by the power of his spirit so i know that miracles exist take away that religious spirit and those demonic teachings that many have indoctrinated people with that the era of miracles have passed because the faith life is a miraculous life you've got to take away that mentality and say lord i believe don't just wish and say lord if you want that's a demonic teaching for it is the father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom get angry with poverty get angry with your family members begging and crying from hand to mouth moving up and down when you get dissatisfied in your spirit then you are ready to receive a miracle get ready to act upon the word when you hear the word and you receive the word you receive it into your spirit and enforce it by faith hallelujah this is why you came tonight i prayed a prayer and i told god i said lord we don't just want a few people five six seven people receiving miracles and breakthroughs in their lives if that's all we get tonight we are failed for every time the waters is being stirred whoever jumps into it and can i tell you something the waters is no longer stirred once it's stirred as much as your faith will want it to be stirred i have my requests that are put before god and i'm coming here very seriously to take the things that god has apportioned for me are you listening to me and so i'm challenging everyone inside and outside you've got to connect open up your spirit now it's not the time to be distracted let me tell you something one encounter tonight can change your life forever are you listening to me meetings like this are very prophetic and are very sensitive one encounter from god can change your life forever one encounter with his anointing can set you free of any kind of terminal disease lose concentration away from satan forget about satan satan is not the issue tonight your faith connecting and let me challenge you do not allow satan deceive you and lie to you and say you are so bad and your life is so terrible you cannot receive a miracle everybody jesus healed in the bible was not born again he didn't heal one person who was born again because the holy spirit had not come upon them but like blind Bartimaeus, if you can say thou son of david have mercy upon me tonight you will experience the power and the glory of god god is going to be doing some dramatic things in this place and i'm encouraging every one of you to open up your spirit so that you will not just waste your time and you will not just be a ceremony that you came for miracle service it's not a name it's an experience are you listening to me where God upgrades your life and takes you to a point where your life is nothing short of beauty and glory hallelujah his presence is in this place strong and mighty to heal to deliver to transform to set free the thief cometh not jesus is not the author of sickness hear me you must convince yourself take away that devilish mindset that says god gave me the sickness to test me no if he gave you the sickness why are you here to be healed 
Jesus cannot bring sickness upon you to test you. The Bible says God is love. Hallelujah. So tonight you must take responsibility. I am SS because my family members are SS. No way. Make up your mind and take responsibility. And say, Lord, tonight I lay it once and for all. Not healed now. And then you are back into sickness. Many of us have suffered delays in our lives. When you look at your, you know that there are certain levels in life that you would have accomplished. Now is the time to place a demand and say, Lord, by the Spirit, you are taking me to that plane. Recovery, restoration. There are many of us that the Lord has spoken certain blessings to our lives that we are supposed to see, but we have not seen it. Now is the time to place a demand and challenge the powers of satan that there be a manifestation of those things that god has spoken there are many of our family members that have suffered so much suffered in their job places everything they lay their hands to do dies they start a business it dies everything it works for others but when it gets to your turn or that of your family members it dies From the beginning it was not so. And tonight, we are partnering with the Holy Spirit and believing that God will take us to that position. Listen, challenge yourself that something about your life, hear me? Challenge yourself that something about your life must change. I'm trying to provoke you by the Spirit so that you will know and realize that you can take this it's it's within your reach you must get angry enough get full of faith enough hallelujah listen don't leave this place tonight do not leave this place tonight without a tangible miracle for your life. Are you listening to me? Refuse it. Refuse it. Place a demand. And say, no way. I'm not stepping out of this place with that sickness. I'm not stepping out with that poverty. An idea must come upon my spirit. I'm not stepping at this level in the spirit. I'm not living at this level of grace. Lift up your voice and pray, inside and outside. Raise a cry, even as we prepare the ground. Place a demand. Place a demand. Place a demand. Shake a is able. 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 Sh
Hallelujah. Now listen. There's someone here you had a dream. And you saw them hit, piercing you. They put a spear. As though to kill you. Who is that person? There's someone here. They trust a spear. Come quickly. But Satan cannot have a place over your life. The devil is a liar. There's no, there's, let me tell you something. Tonight is zero tolerance with Satan. Zero tolerance. Zero tolerance. When you get angry and get wild in your spirit, you will find out that Satan is not as strong. They trust you with a spare. Come out. They trust you with a spare. While you were sleeping, it was so real you woke up with the pain. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm seeing a lady. Um, your elder sister is, I'm seeing the number 34. I believe she's 34 years. They've been praying for her for her marriage. Who is that? 34 years. Your elder sister. 34 years they've been praying for her who is that person come exactly 34 years am i right that's her age they've been praying for her the lord says i should tell you that before the end of this year she's going to get married yeah. write it and go and tell her don't even know her her age is exactly 34 years that before the end of this year i pray in the name of jesus christ that this word will find expression upon the heart of obedience in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. James. James. Hearing the name James. James. For I will uphold James. Who is James? Make sure you don't feel emotional about these words. If it's not, you go back to your seat. Your James, come says for i will uphold james that's what the lord says for i will uphold james for you have suffered many things but in this season the lord is going to be bringing great restoration look at me look at me only be a man of faith you have you love god but there is so much doubt in your heart i need you to know that god is more than able god is more than able to help you 
he's more than able to bring every word that he has spoken to your heart there are many things he wants to show you but you must learn to be away from people and stay with the spirit of god are you listening to me you must learn to be away from people and lord i pray in the name of jesus that there be great grace upon my brother i break away that spirit and that limitation of fear i break away that limitation that will not allow you to do the things that god wants you to do i break it away from your life even right now in the name of jesus christ come i see a lot of oppression in your family a lot of oppression in your family and that's what i see i'm going to pray for you right now and not only will god set you free he will set your family members free i see your mom and i hear the mom april she's supposed to go through a very very uncalled for a challenge that is uncalled for in the month of april but the lord sets her free tonight you believe that in the name of jesus i break the power of satan over your life right now in jesus name and even for your mother mm, the anointing of the spirit is strong upon you can you just hold my hands just touch make contact with my hands in the name of jesus be set free now by the power of the holy spirit for you and for your mother in the name of jesus i see a chain over your head living now let it go i command that chain go in the name of the lord jesus christ hallelujah come the lord says look at me that i should set you free from fear for there are many fears in your heart said the spirit of god he has not given you the spirit of fear but of love of power and of a sound mind hold my hands in the name of jesus can you hold it with both of your hands mm. hold it with both of your hands if you can the anointing of the spirit is flowing through you fear you are a demonic spirit i pray that you let this lady go in the name of jesus i take authority over fear in the name of jesus and jimmy the lord says i should prophesy to you that beginning from the month of march you are entering a fearful dimension of wealth and prosperity that's what the lord says i should tell you a fearful operation of wealth and prosperity fearful operation ideas will begin to come by the spirit calls calls from many people by the grace of god god will show you things from the month of march you are stepping into an unusual level of financial prosperity hallelujah call that lady abigail come i saw your eyes enlarging in the spirit i saw your eyes growing bigger i was wondering why and the lord says increase vision you will step into an unusual level of vision just look at me if you can just look at me as best as you can the power of god is so strong upon you increased unusual level of visions beginning right now the portals of heaven will be open to you i want you as much as you can just look at me there's fire leaving my eyes and entering me in the name of jesus an increased level of supernatural visions in the name of the lord jesus christ supernatural visions even by the power of the holy spirit you step into a great dimension of seeing seeing even by the spirit seeing even by the spirit come my brother look at me there is no other way there is no other way you can be blessed in this life outside of jesus christ are you listening to me there is no other way and if you do not trust him everything that you trust will fall and will crumble and you'll be left with nothing the lord calls you into a real relationship tonight and god says you should lay aside everything that is not him and begin to press for him in sincerity and truth do you understand this is what gives satan a foothold over your life hold my hands i pray for you right now that over those demonic dreams and manifestations of satan now be free by the power of the holy ghost Please come, sir. 
great vessel indeed for the Lord will use you. 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 I see strong grace coming upon you. The Lord will use you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, by the power of the Holy Spirit. Look at me. Free yourself from religion. That's what the Lord says. There are many revelations you have in your mind that is not producing results. You have criticized too many things. Now is the time to begin to embrace the things of the Spirit. That's what the Lord says. Lord, take him to that dimension. That new realm of grace, even by the power of God. I erase the grip of religion over your life. Open up yourself and begin to receive of the fullness of the Spirit. In the name of Jesus. Look at me. For many people think you will not amount to anything. But the Spirit of God says, I set you apart and you will become a great one. Even as the stone that has been rejected, I will make you a great one. Are you listening to me? I see a crown being put upon your head right now as I'm holding you. Father, that you fulfill your word right now. Come, 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 come. Look at me. Look at me. Look at me. See, leave fear. Fear will not bring much to your life. It will only put you in misery. And forget about the things that people are saying. God is separating you to use you. Are you listening to me? There's one of your friends I see. He has a mark. The Lord is saying, leave him. Leave him. Love is a command. Relationship is not. Leave him. Are you listening to me? And get serious with God. God bless you. Look at me. Do you have an elder sister? Where is she? She's married? No, no, no. I mean, there's... Um, do you have anyone staying in Abuja? Abuja. I see one of your people who is staying in Abuja. Um, the Lord says, hear what I say, except the Lord builds a house, the laborers labor in vain. The laborers labor in vain. And that you tell them to commit their all unto God. There's no giving God part and holding part. Are you listening to me? God bless you. Rampia, please come. Run. For I see the Lord bringing real blessings to your family. Real blessings to your family. Um, the Lord is bringing a refreshing. Please put a little water in that cup and just give me. I want to do exactly what I'm seeing in the spirit. The Lord says, just a little. He says he's bringing refreshing to your family. And the Lord says, this is, there's no ritual around it. Before you package water tomorrow and start making madness out of it. This is simple prophetic instruction. Go ahead and drink it. Finish it. Just do what I'm asking you to do. The Lord says he's bringing a refreshing. In exactly two minutes, that water you have taken will become fire in your spirit and in your bones. In exactly two minutes from now. Just hold on there. It will become fire. God will give you ideas by the spirit for was it not water that elijah poured upon the sacrifice that the fire came and licked it up there is nothing that is done that cannot be proven from scripture hallelujah In exactly two minutes said the lord it will become strong fire i see a formation of it already and i'm telling you the truth it will set you apart it will bring favor even to your younger sister that's what i'm seeing your younger sister your younger sister having this great fire thank you jesus christ mercy mercy a lady with the name mercy who are you mercy come you're also mercy Deborah, Deborah Maida, if she's here, the Lord says it's time for you to step up. Where is she? She's not around. Deborah Maida, it's time for you to enjoy the blessings. I'm seeing you holding a big bag and you are going to the farm to pick a lot of fruits. That's what God is showing me. A very big bag. Humanly speaking, it's not something you can carry. But you need to pick the fruits. They are falling from the tree. I believe God is signifying a season 
that it's time to enter into a lot of things. Yahweh, 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 Yahweh. The Lord just said I should stretch my hands towards you. Yahweh, Yahweh. Yahweh. says it's yeah, called the oil of gladness the oil of gladness yeah, being poured upon you have i not said yeah, god is no man's debtor the lord says he yeah, will repay you i see oil being poured upon your head yeah, that's what i'm seeing right now oil being poured yeah, upon your head your name is mercy your name is mercy look at me rise out of timidity for great is your strength, said the Spirit of God. Rise out of timidity. Great is your strength. I sense an anointing to change genotypes. That's what I'm sensing right now. Please get set. I sense an anointing to change. Don't take it for granted. I sense an anointing to change genotypes. I'm about to speak and prophesy the word of the Lord. Right now in the name of Jesus. Out of her, a demonic spirit of fear you will not hide in her soul come out of her right now I set you free in the name of Jesus be free by the power of the Holy Ghost mercy listen find a community of believers you can be in and out find a real community of believers they will help your growth the lord i don't know what it is but the lord says i should tell you i will show you mercy i will show you mercy hold my hands i will show you mercy please hold it with both of your hands if you can i will show you mercy that's what the spirit of god says receive the mercy of the lord the mercy of the lord coming like fragrance i see like perfume upon you the lord says it's my mercy the fragrance of the lord upon you in the name of the lord jesus christ your name is mercy your name is mercy you will be a mother to many look at me look at me the lord says i should tell you you will be a mother to many you will do things you never imagined that you could do you will do things you never imagined that you could do Mercy. The Lord says, I should tell you, you will speak over kings. You will speak over kingdoms. You will speak over territories. A scepter is given upon your hand. That's what the Lord says. A scepter is given. You will speak over kings. You will speak over kingdoms speak over territories a scepter is given upon your hands in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ hallelujah madam please um. I saw something coming like a balloon and then coming towards you and then I saw a sword while I was ministering I saw something like a sword and he just pierced it and it it went down and in my mind i was wondering i was i didn't really didn't understand and i kept quiet and then the lord says i should tell you that the rod of the wicked will not fall upon the lot of the righteous lest they dip their hands in iniquity the lord says i should tell you that he's going to wipe away your tears that's all i hear the lord says i should tell you that you have cried many cries but that in this season is going to wipe away your tears does this make sense to you what i'm saying i want to pray for you lord in the name of jesus according to the power of your word by the power of the holy spirit that you wipe away her tears you have migraine or somebody around your family i see somebody 
I'm seeing um, yes, signs of my, you upon your head. You'll be healed right now. Now, now, not later, right now. In the name of Jesus, I pray by the power of the Spirit of God, be set free, be set free, be set free in the name of Jesus Christ, healed from my grave. Now I command every genotype, SS, hear me, inside and outside, if you are SS, if you are SS, right now, I change your genotype to a a a a a a if you have a problem with your heart, come out quickly. Inside and outside, either a hole in your heart or something pertaining to your heart. Please run out quickly. Let's hurry up so we can conserve time. A heart condition. A confirmed heart condition. Please come out. Oh, holy, holy, blessed is he who comes in the name of our God. Blessed is he who comes in the name of our God. I'm going to pray that the Lord will give you a brand new heart. I'm not praying for healing. You're not going to be healed. A creative miracle. Just believe it whether you understand what I'm saying or not. Are you listening to me? As my hands come upon you, I'm going to be releasing the power of God. The power of God. Now, a brand new heart upon you. A brand new heart in the name of Jesus. A brand new heart. A brand new heart. Now, by the power of the Holy Ghost. A brand new heart in the name of Jesus. A brand new heart in the name of Jesus. A brand new heart. 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 A I command it, a brand new heart, now, a brand new heart, 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 by the power of the Holy Ghost, a brand new heart in the name of Jesus Christ. A brand new heart. Where's Maria? Maria Adese. Where's she? Maria. For the Lord says that He will wipe your tears and cause you to laugh. Because of the testimony of your commitment in his house. Hey, that's what the Lord says I should tell you. For I will wipe your tears and I will cause laughter. That laughter will gush out like springs of living water. My God, let this grace come in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You are, your name is Miriam. Why are you here? 
for a heart condition. Okay, lay your hands. You not only have a heart condition, I see that there's something wrong. I don't know whether it's your back or something. That's what I'm seeing. Am I right? Okay, I'll pray for you now. Look at me. Just hold my hands. In the name of Jesus, I command every bent bone around your back to be straightened. Let it grow back to complete shape. Now the power of God is coming upon your back. I command in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, every malfunctioning of your body be gone now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Please, can that lady, I hope someone can help me identify her. The, a lady standing almost directly under that fan. She's holding her hands like this. A lady with dark, you, looking at me, come. Yes, you. The Lord is healing all kinds of things. No, this... The one at the back, come. But you who is going back, come. You're going to be a great leader. And the Lord is going to commit great wealth into your hands. That's what God is saying, I should tell you. He's going to commit great wealth into your hands. But that it be used for his kingdom. That it be used for his glory. loves you and he wants to use you for his glory you must give him full expression he must find full expression you love him so much but I hear cares 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 you're laden by many cares and the Lord really wants you to give him or hold my hands if you will Lord I pray ah the strong manifestation of the spirit you will never be the same from tonight fire on you now Shut. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You will never be the same again. In the name of the Lord Jesus. You will never be the same again. In the name of the Lord Jesus. There is a strange oil of God's favor that is bringing upon your life. From tonight is a strange manifestation of the favor of the Lord. A strange manifestation of the favor of the Lord. Hallelujah. A strange manifestation of the favor of the Lord. The lady sitting come very quickly before. Please, as you're standing in this atmosphere, I'd like you to know that God is meeting your needs. Are you listening to me? God is meeting your needs. This lady, that lady with you, come. Yes. Look at me. Hold my hands. You may not even know how much you have been oppressed by Satan. But I command victory for you now. In the name of Jesus Christ, I command victory. Great victory. Great victory. In the name of Jesus Christ. The Lord will make you a very influential person for his kingdom. He will give you a word upon your mouth. You may not look like it right now. But the Lord says he's going to do this. He will give you access to kings. And he will grant you grace. One of the things that you will have in your life is courage and boldness. Courage as bold as a lion. The Lord is going to give you great boldness. Hold my hands if you will. Lord, I pray that this great grace and courage will come upon her. Even by the power of the Holy Spirit. That she will do unusual and supernatural things even for the kingdom. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Unusual, supernatural things for the kingdom in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ Aaron the Lord is stepping you into a strange level of blessings a strange level of blessings you have served the kingdom and you have served many 
the Lord says I will now cause men to serve you I will cause men to serve you hold my hands Lord I pray that this grace and this oil this great anointing will come upon him that he will serve many in the name of the Lord Jesus Onu come the exact same word God is saying to Aaron that's what he's saying to you that because you have served many he will cause many to serve you he will cause many to serve you he will cause many to serve you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ he will cause many to serve you please be alert as we minister if you have not written your prayer requests please write them very quickly thank you Jesus I like your heart just to be tuned to the Lord as we minister there's such an unusual prophetic anointing in this place that God wants to reach out to people please the lady that apostle just ministered to with the yellow shirt come and the next person by you come the other lady with the green shirt come the both of you thank you spirit of God thank you Jesus thank you Jesus thank you Jesus God says you're going to carry my message of love to many people I see an experience that you had last year towards the last quarter of last year that brought hurt and condemnation to you is an experience that I cannot talk about but you know it right you know what I'm talking about God says he healed that wound today Jesus says he loves you and he brings healing to that wound and you carry his message of love to many people God bless you I hear God says I'm stepping into your family I'm bringing a message and I'm bringing restoration that's the word I hear God says God says he's bringing a restoration and a healing to a relationship between your mom and one of your elder sisters look at me Omar am I talking God says he's healing a challenge that your sister and your mom has been experiencing in their relationship I mean one-on-one -on -one, there have been some bridges that have been, they have experienced in their relationship and God says because there has not been oneness and unity it has hindered your family God says he's healing that wound tonight and your sister will be restored back to your mom and God says it will be a new season of restoration even financially for your family in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ Abigail please come is Sanet here please come so that we can just save time please come as I'm calling as the Lord is showing me as I'm calling you just come just come just come Abigail the Lord gave me Abigail aren't you Abigail please come the Lord shows me I see a scene that had happened before that the Lord shows me and in this scene I saw your father standing somewhere in a particular land and I could see cassava growing in that land I don't know but it looked to me like somewhere in the southwest part of this country is that where you came from from where okay and and I saw that there was a dispute a challenge about this land and I saw that certain course certain enchantment were released please keep playing were released over your father and your family to bring hurt to bring hurt and to cause misfortune for your family and even death that's what I hear the Lord says where is your father right now nothing is working out nothing is working out nothing is working out that cause from that land God says he will heal it God says he break that yoke of the enemy but are you aware of a challenge a dispute that has to do with the land It was something that their father left for all of them. Yes, and he left it for them. But there was a cause that he spoke over his life, and that's what is responsible with, you know, with the misfortune that your family is experiencing that now that nothing is working for that. I declare that there shall be no death. I reverse that cause of the wicked one, and I declare that the prosperity of God comes to your family. God says he brings healing to your body and perfection. Perfection. Perfection, 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 <laughs> perfection to your body in the name of Jesus Christ. I see the Lord touching your body. I see a challenge that had been that had always caused constant health challenge for you. Something connected to your blood that affects your bone and bring weakness to you around your joint and your bone region. Am I talking? God says He's going to step into there and bring total healing. Receive it now. 
receive the healing power of God the anointing is already on you receive it be free your blood and your bone and all your joints is healed this night in the name of Jesus Christ what's your name Abigail just stand the Lord is not giving me a word for you yet Grace, the Lord says, I should tell you that he's going to intervene in your academics. I see God says he's going to raise someone in your department that will fight your cause. And God says you will celebrate and sing songs of joy in the name of Jesus Christ. Watch out, he's a man, and that man is not a believer. That's what I hear the Lord says. Sandra, God shows me that a ticket is coming, not for you, but for your elder sister. She's going to travel out of the country. God says that demonic barrier is lifted tonight. Do you understand? And God says the challenge that has kept her that she has not gone before now is lifted tonight. God says there's going to be a speedy victory that shall come. And your family shall celebrate. In the name of Jesus Christ. Shadi, I love you so much. Please just be on your feet. God speaks to me to, for you and your husband. I see a certain challenge and demonic attack that the enemy intends to bring to you, particularly in this season of birth. I get what I'm saying. And the Lord is showing me that this challenge is something that your mom experienced around the season of your birth. You may need to go and ask your mom in case you don't know. Such a demonic attack that came to her during the time of your birth. And you even experienced it in the early years of your life. Am I talking to you? God says that attack shall not rest upon you. The plans of the enemy is to snuff and take away your child. But God says it shall not hold. And we shall love when your son comes in the name of Jesus. And God says for me to tell you, God says this is a season of financial breakthrough. Watch it within now and the next three months. You see unusual favor and doors that God will begin to open. People that have never given to you before, watch out and see what the Lord will do. And my dear brother Jakes, God says there's nothing that is impossible. God says he will answer the prayer of your mom. God says shortly he will cause her to rejoice. And I even hear the Lord says, as I answer this prayer, there shall be celebration and I shall cause the bell of wedding to ring in your family. I'm not talking about you, but I'm talking about your sister. For you it is sure, but I'm talking about your sister. Father, thank you. Olorum Bumi or Olua Bumi, but there's Bumi in the name. If I'm talking to you, please just come. Olorum Bumi, Olua Bumi, but there's Bumi in the name. Are you here? Just come quickly, quickly. Okay, please come. I, 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 I looked at you, and, I, and the Lord shows me your father's text. And God shows me that there's a project, like a research work that he's embarking upon. And God says, this work is going to bring honor to him. God says, this work is going to cause him to stand before many great people. And God says, I'm doing the work and I'm bringing health to his body. Health to his body. You know the challenge that your father has been going through. I've never met your father. I've never been to your house. But God says, he's bringing perfection to his health. And this project that I see him working on on his table will bring honor to him. God will use this work to set him before many great men. Go and tell him health, healing, perfection comes to his body. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Jesus. The Lord says, trust me and I will lead you. God says for you to trust him and he will lead you. God says, don't trust in your understanding. He said, you have trust in your understanding before now. But this is the time that I want you to begin to trust me. God says, if you will trust me to come up that, out of that relationship, I'll bring rest and peace to you. And God says, I forgive your sister. Tell her that guilt shall no longer hold her hand bound. Tell her that the snare is broken. And tell her that she shall celebrate her wedding soon. In the name of Jesus. God 
bless you. So take the news to her. It's, it's Sanet here. Is anybody by the name Naomi? Naomi. Let me talk about the Naomi so that if you are the one, you come out. This Naomi that the Lord shows me, I see your elder brother who has been running from pillar to post seeking for job. And God simply asked me to tell you that he's releasing that job. And as he released that job, he's going to bring blessing to the family. He's going to be of great help and blessing to the family. If I'm talking about you, just lift up your hands. Where is he now? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. If you, if you have any challenge, I see God healing people with challenge around their legs. I'm seeing bone condition. Or any part of your body you have challenge, maybe from an accident, bone condition. I see God healing that. Quickly, please just come. So we'll pray for you. Bone condition, I see God healing that. I see God healing bone condition. Lord, I pray for her. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Is anyone in your family who has been crying to the Lord for a child? Yes. Who is the person? My sister-in-law. Your elder sister? Sister-in-law. Because I see the Lord says there shall be Amen. the birth of a child. Amen. I see God says he's bringing a child. Amen. For that yoke is broken. Amen. That yoke is broken. Amen. I will declare that the child is born. We declare that within now, the next one year, the Lord gives you a testimony. Amen. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. The people with the bone condition, I want you to just touch that part. Just touch that part where you're having a bone condition. Just touch there. We may not have the time to take all your testimonies, but just touch the bone condition. Please, minister, I just want us to lay hands on them just quickly. Lord, in the name of Jesus, I declare your need healed, healed, healed. Command that bone condition be healed. In the name of Jesus Christ, I declare you healed, healed. Let that bone be healed right now in the name of Jesus. Let that bone condition be healed right now in the name of Jesus. Let the bone condition be healed right now, right now, right now, right now, right now. In the name of Jesus. Right now, be healed, be healed. Be healed. Be healed in the name of Jesus. If we have laid hands on you, please just go back to your seat and check yourself. Because of time restraint, we may not need to take all the testimonies for all of you. But we declare you healed. You came in with any bone condition. Touch the place. Come on, healing. Healing right now in the name of Jesus. Be healed. Be healed in the name of Jesus Christ. You're healed. Check it. Let me take your testimony. Check it. The bone condition is actually once in a while. It's not every time. I have problems with my nails sometimes. But do you experience it now? No, I don't. So healing is permanent in the name of Jesus. Permanent in the name of Jesus Christ. You have arthritis. I see the Lord heal somebody with arthritis. Where? The gentleman who is going back to his seat with a bone condition. Come. Come. perfect in the name of Jesus you are totally healed now 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 in the name of Jesus Christ so do what you couldn't do before let's take your testimony do what you couldn't do before hallelujah do what you couldn't do before you couldn't do this before your healing is perfected in the name of Jesus your healing is perfected in the name of Jesus Christ You have arthritis come i see the lord heal somebody with arthritis i see the symptoms somewhere around your hand and your leg where you where is that person come quickly arthritis come and be healed thank you father thank you father thank you father mommy you're the one with arthritis are you feeling the pain now yeah with the chest so if you are healed now you will know yes in the name of Jesus, I curse you spirit of arthritis. I release healing, 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 
healing in the name of Jesus. I curse the symptoms. Go! Go! In the name of Jesus, you are healed. Okay, check yourself quickly. Do what you couldn't do before. You are healed in the name of Jesus. I like you to watch something. This guy's leg, can you see that one leg is shorter than the other? If we can have the camera here so the, that this will not be stage managed, nobody will lie and say, just come. Can you see it from the side? I need you to see it. Can you see it? Everybody, just look. Are you seeing it? Yeah. You see that one is shorter? Now watch this. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I command you to grow. Watch it from your screen. Watch it grow. Wow. Watch it grow. In the name of the Lord Jesus. <laughs> You're feeling a pulling on your leg. Look at it. Growing perfect. Look at this. Oh! That pain needs to go. Your, the problem is usually from the spine. And so it causes the leg to be a few inches lower than the normal one. Now try what you couldn't do before if you can shake your legs as hard. Do you feel any pain there? You feel any pain? No, I don't. I don't feel it. Complete perfection. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Are you coming out? For what? Arthritis on the nail. Lord, we release healing. Arthritis, you are cursed. In the name of Jesus, be healed. Be healed now. 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 In the name of Jesus Christ. Check it and do what you couldn't do before. Do what you couldn't do before. You couldn't do this before. Do it again. Do it again. Do you still feel the pain? You are totally healed. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Go back. You? Okay, you're the one with the hand. In the name of Jesus Christ, I release healing into this hand now. Now, now I curse you arthritis. Go in the name of Jesus. Be healed. Let this hand be healed Amen. in Jesus' name. Amen. Do what you couldn't do before. Check it. Do what you couldn't do with it before. Hallelujah. Come, 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 come. Do it, do it. Okay, tell us. Could you do this before? Could you do this before? No, no. You are totally healed. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. Go back. I just needed to speak the word. My dad has been going through this condition. For the Lord, she stands for her dad. Let the dad receive the anointing right now. We cause arthritis. We release healing now in the name of Jesus. Amen. I stand for Basio Kun. Lord, we release healing to Basio Kun wherever he is right now. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Sanet is not here. The Lord shows me something. Sanet is not here. Thank you, Jesus. You came out. Lord, we cause arthritis from our mom's body and even her grandmother will release healing right now. We cause arthritis. Go! In the name of Jesus, you're here. All right. While this is going on, please ushers begin to collect the prayer requests. Lord, we cause bring out your prayer requests inside right and outside. Right now, in the please, name let's of do that Jesus quickly. Christ. Is Gideon here? Gideon, you are either in agri engineering or agri science. Where I'm hearing the name Gideon in agri. If you are here, come. For what? Lord, bless her, bless her, bless her, bless her. In the name of Jesus, bless her. And Lord, concerning marriage, answer the prayers of her heart right now. Answer the prayers of her heart in the name of Jesus. Okay, just quickly. Not a testimony, it's a prayer for my name, prayer for my Okay. I cause this pain, go in the name of Jesus. I release healing now, be healed. In the name of Jesus, do what you couldn't do quickly. I'm healed. Say it. I'm very healed. I'm healed. healed in Jesus' name. Get down, please. Kneel down. Let's pray for you quickly. God says there's a ministry that He's birthing inside of you. 
God says that you shall have an assignment of bringing deliverance unto the captives. God says deliverance shall come to them that are bound even through your hands. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, I ask, let there be a release. Let there be an activation of that ministry inside of him. And let that anointing begin to overflow. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Please, if you need papers, ushers have papers. Thank you, Jesus. And you, God has a word for you. I see God doing some things around your mom that pertains to healing in her body. Do you understand? God is bringing healing to her body. I don't know where she is at the moment, but that's what I see. Perfection. Perfection to her body. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Is now quiet here, please. If you are here, just come quickly. Or is your mom here? Is your mom here? Is mommy here? Please, so we can walk with time. Thank you, Jesus. Let me give them to minister so we can conserve our time. Hallelujah. Um, Ruben, okay, I saw God giving you um, another dimension of word of knowledge. I see that function in your life. God just showed me that. Hallelujah. Quickly pray for some sick cases now. God showed me. Quickly come out, please, as I mentioned you. I saw um, we praying for cancer patients, okay? If you have people that had cancer or have cancer, please just quickly come out. You're understanding for them. I saw that. You can just line up here. Praise God. Then if you're having um, pains at your back, back ache here, please come. We'll quickly pray with you. Then, people with pains in their right ear. I think there's somebody here with pain in the right ear. Then I saw another person. Your neck is actually your neck. You actually, I think you had a problem carrying a load or something. That's where you got an injury. Just your neck. The three major vertebrae here. Please just quickly come up. Please, sir. Just help me. Please just help me. Hallelujah. Jumi Tosin. God will do some amazing things to you guys in your worship life. I saw, I saw you guys with Ruben. Just the three of you. Okay? God will be doing new things for you in the place of worship. Hallelujah. I'll just quickly pray with these people. Just quickly come as they pray with you. Please just go back to your seat. Hallelujah. And us. Hallelujah. Are we to? Are we to? Come. As I was sitting there, the Lord showed me. The Lord showed me. A vision concerning your father. Stand here. As I was sitting there, the Lord showed me a vision concerning your father. And I see a major promotion is going to come to your father. And I see the Lord bringing honor into the life of your father. And the Lord said he's going to put your... Sorry, I'm seeing something. Don't mind me. He's going to do something very tremendous to your father. He's going to give grant him honor. Put your hands. Father, thank you, Lord. Father, pray the Lord God. Let it be released for her father in the name of Jesus. My brother there, I see an unusual healing anointing upon you. Come. I see the Lord reason an unusual healing anointing. I actually saw you leaning down, praying. Praying on your, on your bed. Telling the Lord that. I actually saw the Lord, I saw a vision as I was talking just now. I saw a little down praying on your bed and asking the Lord that you want him to you want him to use you greatly. And I see him releasing an unusual healing anointing upon you. 
Father, I pray that let the anointing intensify in the name of Jesus. Let your anointing upon him. Let your anointing, let your anointing, Lord God, be so real and tangible. I'm so interested about a lady, a young person that came trusting the Lord for, a, for fruit of the womb in my right, my left hand side. Trusting the Lord outside then they will flow for a fair. I saw if you are, you are here. Come, I just saw a vision, somebody on my left. And I see the Lord giving you two boys. Hope you heard me. I see the Lord giving you two boys. And I see an unusual anointing of God. I saw you making a prayer to God that if the Lord gives you children, you're going to give them back to the Lord. You, you made that prayer. Yes, sir. The Lord said He's going to release an anointing upon them and He's going Amen. to use them greatly. Amen. Put your hands in my right hand. Father, thank you, Jesus. I pray. Thank you, Lord. Father, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Um, uh, there is somebody that came in here. I saw a young guy in between the age of 13, in between the age of 13, 16, having a terrible demonic attack with a bone. I see a young guy, a young guy in between the age of, in between the age of, 13, I see a demonic oppression upon you. If you know your head, come out here. If you know your head, your brother, in between the age of 12, 15, 16. Come. I see, I see a, a, a chain. It was a chain I saw. Are you, you find it difficult to sleep? Yeah, sometimes you struggle to sleep and you find a lot of... Put your... Let me... Father, I've come against every demonic attack of, over his life in the name of Jesus. I come against every demonic attack. I speak freedom upon his life in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Now, that, that is uh, a lady outside that has a, a problem with a stomach problem with the lower abdomen. Something, it pains around here. If you know you are, you are the one, just come and let me pray for you. It's very chronic pain. At your lower abdomen here. If you know you're here, come out. Somebody with a very chronic pain outside in the overflow. Somebody in the overflow. In the overflow. Anyone there? Yeah. Come in. Come. Come in. I saw her. That's the very lady I saw. I saw a lady with a very chronic pain. Is it like a fibroid or I don't know? Just come and hold my hand. I will just decree a word. Excuse me. Man of God, lay your hands. Lay your hands on them. Father, I command every familiar spirit to come out of the way. And also, I saw a young lady that came into the meeting with a young guy, a boyfriend of us. Amen. I saw a young lady sitting on the overflow with a young guy, a boyfriend of us that came in. They just came in together. The Lord is asking me to warn you to stop engaging, I mean, involving yourself in what you've been. I see a young guy, a young guy, a young lady sitting in the overflow. The Lord is instructing me to really warn you warn you to stop what you have been involved and that is giving you chance to change and to repent from doing what you've been doing amen hallelujah hey jimmy hey jimmy I see God. Please, let's just quickly. There was a song that was playing. That was, oh, you, you sang it before Yahweh. Please just sing that song. When this meeting started, I saw God give me a burden for people in the overflow. People in the overflow, please listen. I see God. There are some ladies here. You were 
incantations or initiations were done for you by other ladies. People in the overflow, listen, that's the song, just be playing. balada I see a lady, you are very small in stature, you are wearing a wine dress. You were initiated, all the ladies that have been initiated in this place by another lady into the occultic, just come out. The power of God is going to bring you out or you come out. God wants to set you free. For some of you, it's your secondary school days, please come. If anybody ever initiated you into anything, please come. In the overflow, Father, I command that power of darkness to be broken in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. If you were ever taken to a, an occultist or something, please come out. Father, honor your word in this place. For some of you, because of what happened, at night you have sexual intercourse, usually with strange ladies. I'm seeing such people. Such people in Topele de Bokosa, in Palada Bokosa Tabaya, in Pere de de Bosha. Hallelujah. For some of you, it was your parents that took you there. Don't be ashamed. Jesus Christ of Nazareth is setting you free. Please come out. Come out. Come out. Then I heard the name, I was hearing the name Graham Douglas. There is a lady in this place. Your father is extremely wealthy extremely wealthy he travels a lot he travels a lot i don't know if you're from the south south i think there is an in your name or something and i see god wanting to touch your father through you i think your father is either military or something he's either top military but he travels a lot if you're that person please come out please come out i see another lady you have phobia for cockroaches if you're in the same room with a cockroach you must fall ill once you see it. it i don't mean the usual fear you break out in sweats if you are that person please come out god wants to heal you right here and right now right here and right now you fall sick very ill please come out i see a pc something is wrong with your mother you can sing something is wrong with your mother she's dead reading please come out right here. ushers very very quickly now we're entering a very prophetic moment a very prophetic moment in this meeting let's have the prayer requests very quickly a very prophetic moment opportunity God has given us an instruction inside and outside please send your requests hallelujah can can you turn it Aaron? is it possible please turn the requests we're going to be praying on this request whatever it is that you made as a request I'd like you to know that the end of it hear me 
the end of it comes, whatever it is. Please, everybody, rise up on your feet, inside and outside. I'd like to invite all the servants of God. Please, the ministers of the gospel, can we come as we pray on this request? Hallelujah. Now, listen. As we pray on this request, miracles, listen to me, please. Instant miracles, instant miracles will begin to flow both to you and to your loved ones. Are you listening to me? As we, please, come up, let's, let's come quickly. As we lay our hands in faith, instant miracles, please call that lady. That lady is not done. God is not done with her yet. There are all kinds of demonic manifestations. She's been initiated into all kinds of things you want to pray for her. As we pray, everyone join us and pray by faith all over this building, inside and outside. Lord, in the name of Jesus, we release miracles, instant healings, instant deliverances, instant miracles, instant breakthroughs.
Leadership anointing. Receive it. 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 Take it, Amen. Inside and outside, take it, Amen. Take it, take it, take it. She cut a lava core bosata. Shut up, Bosasa cut a lebricetosa. Favor with God, shut up. Favor with men, Amen. Favor with God, Amen. Receive it, Amen. The anointing. For supernatural, inexplainable favor. Amen. Lift up your hands, everybody. Receive it. Amen. Take it. Take it. Amen. Take it. Amen. Inside and outside. Take it. Amen. Favor anointing. Take it. Amen. By the power of the Holy Ghost. Take it. Take it. The favor anointing. Favor anointing. Hey, All those in debt, in debt, financial debt. Both for you and for your family. If there's any family here that is in financial debt, Rekaposotoya, Remposhoto Sokata, Palekatos, be free. Be free. Shake it up. Amen. Paratosata. Everyone here who has suffered delay, any kind of delay, don't care what it is, in relationship, in marriage, in your academy, in ministry, in business, if God be God. If God be God, I command speed in the name of Jesus. Amen. Speed in the name of Jesus. Whatever has held you back, there are many of you. You are moving, but you are not making progress for yourself, for your family. Tonight, enough is enough. I prophesy that spirit that came upon Elijah that made him to run. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Speed in ministry, speed in business, speed in your finances. I want to prophesy to your academics. I want to prophesy. I don't care. I don't want to know what your CGPA is. I don't want to know how many carryovers you have. That's none of my business. I don't want to know who likes you or who does not like you. This night, right now, I command, begin to soar. Five points, receive it. Five points, receive it. Five points, receive it. Five points, I prophesy. Distinction, receive it. Receive it. Hallelujah. Some of you read, you are not lazy. You do your best. You have tried to explain to people. They can't understand. Every time you want to read, you find out that there's something holding you back. Tonight, 
as surely as my father lives every mental blockage everything called dull let it die tonight in the name of Jesus receive a super intelligent mind I prophesy a super intelligent mind conquer all your difficult causes conquer it conquer it go back as a victor hallelujah I want to pray for your finances the error of begging and living from hand to mouth begging begging for everything many of you have left the Lord because of financial challenges in the name that is above every name don't tell me about your father's job has nothing to do with your job don't tell me you are not working the power to prosper the power to prosper the power to prosper take it take it take it take it the power to prosper take it inside and outside take it the power to prosper prosperity in business prosperity in ministry receive it in the name of jesus there are many of us hear me who have suffered with habits habits all kinds of ungodly habits you have done the best you have cried you have fasted you have prayed lift up your hands right now every habit that does not represent the life of the kingdom i command it out of you now out of you now out of you now out of you now out of you right now hallelujah every spirit of fear timidity and discouragement this is what has stopped many people although you are praying in tongues fear timidity discouragement tonight right now I take authority over it let it live your life forever in the name of Jesus I command multiply in the name of Jesus be fruitful in the name of Jesus subdue in the name of Jesus every one of you here tonight is stepping into a new level of the anointing of the spirit receive it a new level of the anointing the operation the miracle working power receive it from tonight your words become powerful everyone you bless is blessed in the name of Jesus I speak over you every spirit of death every spirit of failure whether by accident whether by the sword right now let it be lifted from your life forever in the name of Jesus no more death no more death hallelujah I command every dying dream every dying vision every dying idea books to write songs to write organizations God has been speaking I command every dry bone share the word of the Lord arise 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 let your dreams come alive let your visions come alive hallelujah hallelujah
everyone in your family who is looking for a job or marriage or a building project that's what God is saying these three things job marriage a building project right now by the power of the spirit I command that you receive it for your loved ones supernatural marriages receive it receive it receive it receive it jobs for your loved ones receive it jobs without interview jobs without interview receive it hallelujah hallelujah everything that has made you cry i don't care what it is everything that you came here with that has brought tears from your eyes as surely as the lord lives you walk out of this ground a free man a free woman no more tears i prophesy no more tears by the word of god i create for you a future with laughter 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 fresh passion for the word of god fresh passion for the word of god receive it fresh passion for the word of god let the spirit of prayer fall grace to pray like a general grace to pray the spirit of prayer the spirit of intercession Lastly, I prophesy. The Lord tells me, release the anointing for signs and wonders. Signs and wonders are not necessarily miracles. And Lord, according to your word, signs, wonders, at the count of three, this one will fall heavy. This one will fall heavy. One, two, three. Receive it. Signs. Wonders. Signs. Wonders. Become a sign. Become a wonder. Become a sign. Become a wonder. Become a sign. Accomplish more than your capacity. Accomplish more than your capacity. Hallelujah. All of you who are lecturers, if there's any lecturer in this place, because you came tonight, I command. That's what the Lord is telling me to declare. That the believer lecturers that came tonight, I command a grace that will distinguish you for honor. You can receive it for your parents. Receive it in the name of Jesus. No more weakness. No more frustration. No more begging. You are the head and not the tail. You are above. You are not beneath. Arise. Shine. Arise. Shine. Arise. Shine. Hallelujah. So that when you leave this place tonight, you will know that you did not waste your time. Many of you will go back and step into a fearful order of operation in this life. See, the Bible says there are some beings that are celestial. There are others that are terrestrial. Every man is not the same. There is a plane that others walk in. 
they walk like spirits they talk like spirits they are not bounded to the limitations of this realm many of you will go back and suddenly receive calls that things are shaking changing changing in your family uncles that have forgotten you will call you and send millions to your account i'm not motivating you i am prophesying to you where the spirit of the lord is there is liberty now listen to me the bible says for this purpose was the son of god made manifest that he may destroy the works of the evil one the greatest miracle that can happen in this place is for you to come back to the kingdom there are many of us who have not made a personal commitment to love god and to begin to live by his principles you're not born again every time you hear the things of god there are many of us that frown at it now this is very important everybody listen the spirit of god is in this place you've never made a decision for jesus christ or you have made a decision just carelessly and you've left the things of god there is love in this place and there is a big welcome i'm not asking you to think about it i'm not asking you to pray inside and outside right now leave your seat and run and come and give your heart to the lord do that quickly you want to make a decision you're saying enough is enough please leave your seat inside and outside the lord is calling you right now leave your seat and come the holy spirit is speaking to you you need to make your ways right i don't care if you're a pastor you're a bishop appreciate them as they come inside and outside the holy ghost is calling you it's a new beginning keep clapping motivate them appreciate them inside and outside the bible says in the day that you hear his voice harden not your heart now it's a new beginning those of you outside the lord is calling you do not reject his call you have seen his power you have seen his grace appreciate them we will wait for you appreciate them satan you will not hold anyone bound appreciate them they are still coming the lord is still speaking those outside don't let your friend hold you back it's a new season keep clapping as they come keep clapping as they come don't be tired hallelujah if you are still inside or outside while i'm speaking you can still come hallelujah now look at me for those of you standing i'd like you to know that we love you you're making the greatest decision that you have ever made in this life are you listening to me the greatest decision to make jesus lord of your life not just to become a christian but to become a citizen of the kingdom this is the secret of victory this is the secret to a life of glory no matter what you have done men may condemn you but let me tell you there is love for you here i don't care what you have done nobody condemns you are you listening to me now all of you standing in front lift your hands as you pray this prayer after me say after me dear lord jesus it's not a special number say it out of revelation dear lord jesus i love you and i believe you died for me i believe you shed your blood for my sins and this night i make a decision to love you to live for you and to serve you i receive eternal life into my spirit and i declare according to the word of god that i am born again holy spirit come and find a home in me teach me the laws of the kingdom and make me relevant in the kingdom 
from today I denounce sin and Satan I declare that I'm genuinely born again hallelujah let me pray for you father thank you for these ones they have expressed their desire and their love for you and for your kingdom for as many who will come Lord you will in no wise cast away I pray that that preserving grace will rest upon them that grace that preserves men and keep them everything that you have that has held you bound you are walking out of it as you go back in the name of Jesus I declare that you are free your sins are forgiven you in the name of Jesus Christ Amen. look at me this is the greatest decision that you have made never forget this day are you listening to me now I like you to just follow the ushers they are going to have details of your information and will follow you up adequately and pray with you this is the best decision I love you and I congratulate you in Jesus Christ. dearly beloved I hope you were blessed by this message do not keep the video to yourself share to as many as you can to help them bless check our home page for more of our messages subscribe to the channel comment on it like it see you on our next video bye pray 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 for your destiny the phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.